Here's Village Manager Patty Bates and Solicitor Chris Connard. Okay, and next I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of potential litigation. I make that move. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll do the roll call again. Housh. Uh, yes. McQueen. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Krieger. Yes. Sanford. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mark, I'm going to have you come up to the front. I'm going to come down. Which gives me an opportunity to show off my uh, Christmas suit. So, uh, <laughs> I would want to lose that opportunity. <laughs> All right. And uh, we, have, we have one for Mark here. Okay, so I'll let you have that. But also, um, I'll have you repeat after me and raise your right hand. Okay, good. So, uh, I solemnly affirm. I solemnly affirm. That I will support the commission. I will support the commission, the Constitution, the Constitution, and will obey the laws of the United States, and obey the laws of the United States, and of the state of Ohio, and the state of Ohio, that I will in all respects, that I will in all respects, observe the provisions of, observe the provisions of, the charter and the ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, the charter and the ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, and will faithfully discharge the duties of, the Office of Energy Board. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome to the board, Mark. Thank you. All right. Okay, and now I believe we've got announcements. So uh, do we have any announcements from council members? Marianne? Yes, I have an announcement. I'd like to acknowledge and congratulate the Mills Park Hotel. They were uh, awarded the Hospitality Leadership Team of the Year by the Ohio Hotel and Lodging Association mm -hmm. for their hotel and how they serve people who come to their hotel. Awesome. All right. Any other announcements? I have a few. Actually, I don't know how I forgot, but Canada Council Member is not official till they get the Yellow Springs pen. Thank you. So welcome aboard again. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, for anyone that wasn't listening to NPR today, uh, I thought it was very notable that Webster made the uh, word of the year mm -hmm. justice, mm -hmm. which yep. I think says a lot. Uh, yeah, this was announced today. Yep. Uh, it says a lot about um, where people's minds are at, including uh, the village. Um, of other notes was Oxford decided their word of the year was toxic, and dictionary.com decided uh, that they would do uh, misinformation. Um, but I much prefer the positive word. Um, also, if you did not see, the village was awarded $22,084, and I wanted to mention this was from the county, and it's something that they're planning to do uh, hopefully every year. And uh, in particular, as we think about this, it was really emphasized that something that would have a high return on investment with those dollars would be um, well looked upon. So when we think about how we're going to invest those $22,000 next year, I thought that would be good for us to start uh, contemplating. Um, and we do need to spend that in 2019. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, was we just found out that uh, we made it to phase two for the Culture of Health Award, which uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, almost 200 municipalities applied. We are in the top 20%, and uh, a lot of people help work on that. I see Karen uh, in the audience. Um, Kaneta helped with that. Uh, it was a really great joint effort. And if we get awarded uh, a prize, we can think about how to invest that money as well in improving our culture of health. Um, also, I wanted to clarify something that came up at the last meeting about the grant that we received for the active transportation plan, because I pondered when Marianne asked me to clarify that it was not local taxpayer dollars and that that grant ultimately from Department of Transportation, Department of Health came from uh, uh, state and federal dollars. And it occurred to me that that's a pretty cool thing, that 
we actually brought our state and federal tax dollars back to the village, which I'm sure is what Marianne wanted me to highlight when she made that clarification. And uh, I think it's, you know, again, a testament to the fact that, you know, we're going out there and getting things that are improving our community and uh, doing really cool stuff with that. Um, no, I, I just yes. want to clarify because that wasn't really, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it really you know, it's good. not like if we get state money or if we get federal money, yes, we haven't individually put that much into that pot, but the country or the state has, it's all come from people. I understand, so. but often those dollars go well, and yeah. are spent on things we would not value and they don't well, often true. come back to our village. So that's why I wanted to <laughs> remind us that it really is a big win. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to say um, is something that uh, I feel it's important to announce because it ties to a general theme and since I'm thinking about justice today, um, I wanted to comment on uh, a letter that was in the YS News two weeks ago um, that uh, I was a little disappointed in and I want to explain a little bit why because I think it is relevant to how we move forward our goals for the justice system. Um, I greatly appreciate the contributions of the 365 Project and everybody else to the efforts that we have here in the village. But part of why I was disappointed in the letter is because I feel that a lot of people that have worked really hard um, felt very slighted by um, uh, the letter. And I don't think it was an intentional, but I really want to thank the folks that have been doing so much hard work, which includes our police department, They've been working very hard to change our culture. The Justice System Task Force has done a ton of work. Council has done a ton of work. And uh, while uh, the guidelines for village policing were improved by feedback we got from the 365 Project, there was a lot of core work that went into that that also needs to be recognized. The second thing I want to highlight is that the um, initiatives that were mentioned in the letter are things that we are actively working on. And it was a bit ironic to me because I remember several conversations with uh, Gavin, who was one of the, uh, Leonard, who was one of the signatories to the letter, about how we needed help with figuring out how to improve our evaluations, our recruitment, our hiring. And I, I wanna underscore that the kind of work we're doing is obviously not easy work. Uh, it's great to get recommendations, but what we really need is capacity and support with this work. And so I'm really excited that we have a justice system uh, commission now that's gonna work on that. But I would also encourage folks to um, think about how we can be more constructive with the whole idea that it takes a village and contribute and not just uh, you know, point out flaws. All right, if this work were easy, we would have tackled it already. It takes time, we need help. And so that's really what my message is, is a call for anyone that's interested in supporting the village in these efforts. We would love to have you actively involved in contributing. So um, those are my announcements. Okay, um, so next we have the consent agenda, which involves the uh, December 3rd minutes and uh, I'd entertain a motion. I, yes. I've, oh, sorry. I have one correction to yes. the minutes. Um, there at the very top of page six, Judy had that I said um, that the Safer House to School funding was available every five years. It's available every year, but you have to update your travel plan every five years. And Judy's already made that correction, but I wanted you to be aware of it. Great. Um, any other comments about the minutes? Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll move that we approve the minutes as amended. I second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, so, Marianne, I think, oh no, sorry, review the agenda. Um, uh, any changes or additions that we have for the agenda? I would just like to have a couple sentences worth of time at the end of the meeting when ordinarily we would be giving our commission reports, which we're not doing, just to highlight uh, something about the Little Miami River that I think. Okay, great. 
Um, we also had the resolution from um, Community Solutions about the Agraria Trail. Do yes. we want to put that on the agenda? Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I... Okay. Well, and I will say I did communicate back and forth with them there, and they're okay if that rolls forward. Just so you know, there's no time in the next okay. meeting. Well, and and since the application is not due till February, maybe let's do that because I actually have I saw did I see Susan come in? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I I had some thoughts about some things that we might add, like a reference to the active transportation plan. Okay, so let's put that on the agenda for January seventh. Um, anything else? Okay, now, Marianne, uh, petitions and communications. Yeah. Okay, we had a number of petitions and communications. So we had a number of uh, communications in support of the um, Home Inc. Senior Housing PUD, and I'll, I'll just read the names. Um, Susan Jennings from Community Solutions, Karen Wintrow from the Chamber of Commerce, Donna Sorrell, Catherine Hitchcock, Susan Pfeiffer, Suzanne Patterson, Joan mm -hmm. Horn, Richard Zopp, Susan Stiles, uh, Judith Hempfling, Bruce Bratmiller from Friends Care Community, Richard Lapides, Ilsa Tebritz, Kevin Magruder, uh, who is also a board member of Home Inc., myself. Uh, let's see. I think that is it for for those letters. Then we had some other letters. Uh, well, Colin Altman, fire chief, uh, wrote a letter <clears throat> regarding the PUD and its um, accept, his, his acceptance of it in terms of fire uh, code, fire suppression. Uh, Kaneta Sanford uh, wrote a letter regarding recusing herself from the PUD discussion. Uh, Emily Seibel sent in uh, frequently asked questions regarding the senior housing. The chamber, uh, did a thank you to the village for their support and a happy holidays. And I wish we had more of those cookies on the table. <laughs> Josh Knapp uh, had sent a letter to um, council regarding uh, issues around the security, the Bryan Center at night. And Chief Carlson uh, submitted uh, a letter outlining the plans for the New Year's Eve uh, celebration, which will be hosted by the fire department with the uh, support of our police department. And I think, let me see. If and can I just underscore? New, and, okay, yeah. and uh, 365 had the letter you were referring to, Brian, about village policing, and you, Brian, had uh, included the village policing guidelines. Yes. And I just wanted to underscore in uh, Chief Carlson's memo, it confirms that uh, the streets will be closed and safe from 11.30 yes. to 1 a.m. Yes, yeah. And, and then there's also the uh, Susan Jennings uh, proposed resolution for Agraria Trail, which we're going to have at our next meeting. Excellent. Okay. Um, so let's move into public hearings and legislation. And uh, first up, we have the second reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2018-50. And uh, Judy, if you could read that in title only, please. Yes, this is approving the 2019 annual appropriations and declaring an emergency, Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Uh, can I get a motion? I move. I second. Okay. Um, so I, I guess first of all, uh, I will open the public hearing uh, since this is the second reading. And um, we are reading this as an emergency. Uh, you will also note that there was some clarification in the packet about why we sometimes read things as an emergency. In this case, we need to have the budget passed by the end of the year. So we do not want to get into a situation like seems to happen all the time in D.C. And we've also had a very long process and, and a very good process around the budget. Um, so, Colleen, if you want to say anything. I just made the, um, the transfer from the general fund, which was the only thing that we have different in the, the budget. So. Great. Any questions or comments from council? Questions or comments from citizens? Okay, if not, Judy, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Sanford? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Krieger? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Housh? Yes. 
Thanks, Colleen. Great work. And we're not going to shut down the village, huh? We are not shutting down the village. <laughs> no way. Okay. Uh, next up. Sorry, we sorry about that leave you requested, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have that extra Christmas Eve day, so. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, next up, we have second reading, public hearing for Ordinance 2018-51. And uh, Judy, I think we can also read that in by title only. All right, this is approving creation of a fund for the furtherance of affordable housing in the village of Yellow Springs. Okay, can I get a motion, please? I move. Second. All right. Um, I will open up by just saying that uh, we have created this fund. We have not appropriated, we haven't put any money in the fund, but there is a process to set up any new fund um, that has to go to the state auditor. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. State auditor? And uh, so knowing that one of our major goals uh, that I think will continue is around affordable housing, and uh, it always resonated with me the comment that Judith made <laughs> about um, how what you have in your budget reflects what your values and goals are as a community. We thought this was a good idea to set this up. There will be a later discussion possibly about putting funds into that uh, uh, budget line. But for now, we're just setting it up. So uh, opening the public hearing, any questions or comments from council? Uh, questions or comments from citizens? All right, if not, Judy, uh, if you do the roll again. Yes, Stokes. Yes. McQueen? Abstain. Krieger? Yes. Sanford? Yes. Housh? Yes. OK. Next, we have the emergency reading of Ordinance 2018-52. Uh, Judy, title only, please. Yes, this is approving the 2018 supplemental appropriations for the fourth quarter for the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. All right, Colleen. And did you want to go ahead and grab a motion while we're? Oh, sorry. Uh, can I get a motion, please? I move. Second. Okay, this is um, what we call housekeeping. It takes into consideration the amounts that we need to put into our budget to finish out our 2018. Uh, we, uh, the breakdown that we um, have in it is the, the big one that we are putting on, this, um, on our budget is the project from OWDA for the water treatment plant. And then to counter that, we will also have an estimated resource that, to balance that out when I give that to the county auditors. That's from the loan money for the plant going in and the expense for it going out. The rest, we did need some more additional wages. Um, again, some of it was just from lack of um, being able to estimate when people have left and what their cash outs are and just uh, fulfilling those little obligations. And then on the water fund, Second half of the new payment was underestimated, but it was a year in advance and it was hard to get those numbers together when the budget was put together last year. So this cleans that up and we'll be able to make that payment. And Colleen, can you just clarify when you say cash outs, what that refers to? When an employee would um, have unused accrued time, which would be a portion of sick leave, any vacation time, um, and they leave for another employment, they are um, entitled to that. That's earned time that they did not use, and we have to, of course, write that check, and sometimes it can be very large. So. Okay. And this is, this is a standard? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Any questions or comments from council? And I'd just like to clarify on the OWDA and OPWC money for the water plant. That is strictly a that is strictly a paper transaction. That money never actually comes into our coffers at any point, but we are required to show it as coming into us and being distributed out to a vendor. Um, even though OWDA and OPWC actually pay the vendors directly, yeah. we are still required to reflect those transactions in our budget. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, any other questions or comments from council? Questions or comments from citizens? Okay, and will we be doing a second reading of this? No. Okay, so, uh, so I'm opening the public hearing. I'm closing the public hearing. And uh, Judy, if you could call the roll, please. Yes, Krieger. Yes. Stokes. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Sanford. Yes. Housh. Yes. All right, thanks again.
Finally, we have the reading of resolution 2018-42, uh, Judy again by title only. This is adjusting the village employee wage scales. Okay, <laughs> that, that is true. And, uh, <laughs> can I get a motion? Yes. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, Patty. Um, so as council knows, the procedure is for every year for us to do a little research on what the surrounding communities um, are adjusting their employee wage scales by. You'll see that research um, also included in your packet. Um, when Colleen and I were doing the budget, um, looking at what we saw, we thought that the 2% was the wage increase that was available and appropriate for the staff. And this encompasses the hourly employees. This is not the salaried employees. Salaried employees are done separately, so. Okay. And so this is essentially a cost of living adjustment? It is. Okay. It is. And also one thing I noticed was not on the research is Green County collectively also did 2%. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, I, I had a question. Would it make sense to say increasing rather than adjusting? I mean, probably you, usually you don't adjust down, but. Yeah. I, that's just the word that's always been in there. How um, it's yeah. done. With the I just that, I just changed I changed dates up. and percentages, <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments from council? Um, I will just say uh, I continue to be incredibly impressed with our village team and the hard work that uh, everyone does to deliver to the community on our village values and goals. So, Johnny and Colleen are here. Denise is here, and and please. Pass that along to everyone. I know that we all feel very strongly about that. Um, in my mind, this is a minimum of what's deserved, and we also need to be fiscally responsible. So I appreciate that you guys look at what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, any questions or comments from citizens? All right. If not, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? OK. Um, was an interesting musical prelude. <laughs> uh, do we have any, uh, it was not planned either, any citizen concerns, uh, so anything that's not about housing? Judith has her hand raised. Okay, Judith Hempley, please come on. That's okay. We're not that formal. Judith Hempley. Um, Two things you may need to clarify, or that I would like a clarification on. Uh, Brian, you know, I, I think you're a great president of the council, but I didn't quite understand the critique of the letter from 365. I think 365, I thought that it was, when I read it, I saw it as a constructive rec uh, reminder. Um, and I don't want us to feel like we had to be so careful about how we address council that people take offense. So I just want to say that. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, um, Josh Knapp's letter about people who are staying downstairs overnight in, mm -hmm. in the uh, lobby. Uh, it sounds like people who are likely homeless. Maybe some of them have mental health issues. And I wasn't sure what was being recommended, but if we're thinking that um, we're not going to keep the building open to those people, I feel like before we would make a change like that, if I understood what the letter was asking for, um, that something be, you know, something try to be coordinated within the village to give, you know, these folks. So it's, we're going into the winter season, mm -hmm. and I was just concerned about, you know, persons who have used that as kind of a safe place at night, mm -hmm. that um, what's the alternative, and that we not make some kind of a change in terms of that. So mm -hmm. that was okay. Thank Thanks, you. Judith. Mm -hmm. And I think, would you like to address I, this? I would, comment? I would. Um, and so this, this will not change the way that we handle things. It will simply allow the dispatcher who is on duty to know who's in the building at any given time by being, being the person who gives them that access. So nobody's going to be denied entry into the building if they need to come in here for some reason. But we have had instances where if the dispatcher is away from the desk in the restroom or heating up their lunch and their own, people come in, do damage in the back part of the building, the dispatcher doesn't even know that they're there. This is more for that type of thing than to keep those folks out of the building. Um, it is also to help us 
be able to encourage them to take advantage of the things we're offering them, like rides to the shelter or those kind of things, which they, peri they regularly decline when they're offered. So. Yeah, and I won't say too much about the first comment, Judith, but I do just want to say that the, what I'm trying to highlight is that you have a very open and accessible council and chief, and uh, I would hope people avail themselves of that in trying to work together to solve problems. Um, okay, so now we are into special reports. Oh, I'm sorry, any other citizen concerns? Okay. Special reports. Okay, so um, we are going to need to talk a bit about process in uh, how we will be reviewing uh, this um, PUD, um, Planned Unit Development. And uh, Chris, I think you're going to begin with uh, providing an overview, and then we'll talk a little bit more. Chris Connard, Village Solicitor. Um, okay, as my preliminary comments, I want to uh, first thank uh, Village staff. Um, for the, the amount of work they did, and uh, in particular, uh, the Planning Commission, uh, a volunteer group of citizens who really worked hard and thoughtfully uh, in this process to make the recommendation to Village uh, Council, and uh, certainly uh, Home Inc. And, and St. Mary's worked hard to make sure that the complete information was before Council. Um, procedurally, this is how we're going to proceed today. Um, council will have to first make certain acknowledgments of, of what's in the record. Um, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Council will then weigh the factors um, and then determine whether to approve or, or not with potential modification uh, the plan. And if that, if approval is given, uh, that matter will proceed legislatively on January 7th for two readings of uh, an ordinance to approve rezoning, which would accomplish that purpose. Uh, it's my understanding that that timeline will uh, lead to the ordinance taking effect before the deadline that's needed for the grant process for Home Inc. Um, and, and so addressing that procedural posture, now I'll get to the part of the record that we need to establish for council. Um, so uh, according to the Village Zoning Code, council is charged with undertaking the following action. Upon receipt of the Planning Commission recommendation, Village Council shall review the preliminary development plan, the record of the Planning Commission proceedings, the standards uh, set forth in the Village Zoning Code, uh, Section 1254.06, the recommendations of the Planning Commission, and that would include to approve, disapprove, or approve with modifications to the preliminary, preliminary uh, development plan and zoning code. Now, um, in order to move forward to create the necessary record, uh, each member of council has to affirm that they've reviewed the record in its entirety, which does include summaries of what the citizens' comments, the comments from the applicants, and, and other third parties. Uh, so um, if we could do that, then we can get to the next piece. Okay. Um, so, uh, Kenetta, we'll start with you, and if you can just affirm that you have reviewed all of those documents. Um, I am recusing myself for reasons of conflict of interest in that I currently work at Home Inc. Okay, great. Lisa? I affirm that I've reviewed all the materials and uh, additionally I attended the meetings in person. I affirm that I've reviewed all the material as well. I affirm that I've reviewed the materials and I have attended the meetings. And I affirm that I've reviewed all of the materials and I did watch both meetings uh, via our um, YouTube channel. So, and additionally, as part of this process, council ha will have the opportunity to ask any questions of the applicants or staff uh, to obtain necessary information that uh, any individual member or council as a body feels that it needs uh, to supplement the information already contained. Uh, it's my understanding now that Judy's going to read the standards upon which the uh, council has to consider and then allow an opportunity for public comment before right. deliberation. And just before you read, um, I want to <coughs> highlight uh, that what we will be doing next is we will be going through the review standards that Judy is about to read. So I would suggest, um, I know council has already read these and reviewed them, but in terms of thinking about the clarification questions that we might have, they should be focused around these review standards. Similarly, 
Uh, I wanted to make sure that citizens also listen carefully because we do have a nice compilation of all the comments that have been made uh, right in front of us that we have reviewed. So what would be most helpful is to focus any comments again on these review standards because we will need to go through each one and approve or deny and we can also make modifications. Okay, so Judy. All right, <clears throat> this is chapter 1254.06 review standards. In considering the PUD request, the reviewing body must find that the proposed development meets all of the following general standards. A, the PUD will comply with the standards, conditions, and requirements of this chapter. B, the PUD will promote the intent and purpose of this chapter. C, the proposed project will be compatible with adjacent uses of land, the natural environment, and the capacities of public services and facilities affected by the proposed project. D, the proposed project will be consistent with public health, safety, and welfare needs of the village. E, granting the PUD rezoning will result in a recognizable and substantial benefit to ultimate users of the project and to the community, which would not otherwise be feasible or achievable under the conventional zoning districts. F, the PUD will not result in, an, in a significant increase in the need for public services and facilities and will not place a significant burden upon surrounding lands or the natural environment unless the resulting adverse effects are adequately provided for or mitigated by features of the PUD as approved. G, the PUD will be consistent with the village's comprehensive plan and vision, Yellow Springs and Miami Township. Specifically, the following planning principles shall be adhered to as applicable. One, redevelopment and infill locations should be favored over greenfield development. Two, natural features and resources should be preserved or at least conserved. Three, future development and redevelopment shall strengthen the physical character of the village. Four, quality design is emphasized for all uses to create an attractive, distinctive public and private realm. Five, places are created with an integrated mix of uses that contribute to the village's identity and vitality. Six, diverse housing choices are found throughout the village including relatively high density and affordable units. Seven, parks, open space, and recreational areas are incorporated into future development. And eight, places are connected and accessible throughout the community by transportation methods other than automobiles. And then H, the PUD will respect or enhance the established or planned character, use, and intensity of development within the area of the village where it is to be located. Okay, thank you, Judy. Um, so, Marianne, do you want to start with any questions that you have? Uh, no, I have no questions. I participated in the process and I wrote uh, something that's in the council packet. I okay. have no questions. Great. Kevin? I mean, there's certainly a lot <clears throat> a lot that could be said, and, and I also should affirm that I also uh, watched the video of uh, the last um, Planning Commission meeting. Um, and I I don't have any particular questions, but I, I trust um, the process. I trust the people involved. I trust the subject matter experts um, and, and, and the folks, uh, you know, Home Inc. and St. Mary that just, you know, go through and do all the work to package all these things together that I think are complicated when you try to understand it all. But the fact that they can present it in such a fluid manner, I think, has been very, very helpful. Um, I appreciate all the information that's come out of Planning Commission to try to really go through, you know, at a granular level, all of the things that that we, you know, and I'll, I'll, I will admit that, that I've tried to look at it and read the material as a regular citizen, just to understand really, you know, what all the facts are. Um, and so I'm going to pause for a second. How far should I go in my well, comments? What, what I'll say is <laughs> that um, this, this part is for questions, okay. and we'll all have an opportunity so, to summarize our thinking right. before we vote. Excellent. So I do have, I want some clarity with regard to, um, given if, 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 if the building is built and 54 units are there, you know, are we relatively sure, you know, that we'll be able to serve that facility um, from a physical needs perspective. Water, sewer, electricity. I mean, I think everything else being said, as long as we can do what we are required to do from a functional perspective, you know, I think that really, really sheds a great deal of light and, and probably addresses a great deal of concern. Um, so 
Okay. Do we want to. Well, it sounds like Johnny, are you prepared to answer that question? I'm going to answer the best I can. Okay. I think we can, but we will have to do some improvements and uh, move things to prioritize to get that ready for this development. But with the information that we've been provided, uh, I think we can make it happen. Okay. So you're, you're confident that the electrical, I think there's a... There's two circuits right there. Okay, the circuit's there, so no additional expense on the village's part with this? Um, I can't say that because I don't know what the final drawings are going to render. Mm -hmm. uh, we have preliminary drawings, so until I have final drawings and it's finally detailed out, uh, I, do, I can't answer if there's going to be additional cost. Okay, um, so separate, I'll separate the cost, you know, but in terms of the physical requirement. It might be a, an additional. It could take a larger transformer that uh, than what we have spec'd out due to the service if it changes size, uh, but that's just a matter of buying a different transformer. Okay, so a transformer exists in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that there, could be placed there. Correct. No. You know that absolutely. could satisfy the need. Absolutely. Okay. And as far as the commitments, just a. Uh, since I have a, a, a just to clarify, I guess the, there are commitments that have been made to there infrastructure is. improvements. Correct. Okay, and and yeah. those are focused on. We've done the root control already uh, this year for Herman Street, and if you guys proceed forward tonight, then we will be putting that on a sewer relining uh, for early in the spring to get the sewer relined, and uh, then the. Power, the water's already there. I mean, you're not doing get no more water than what you got right there. It's got the a 12 inch line from the tower at Zingy Avenue, turns over to a 10 inch. So they're gonna have the most we can get them uh, right off the bat. And and do I remember something like 53,000 that's been? That uh, Home Inc has agreed to, uh, yes. It's okay. something in that neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the facility can be served Electricity can be served with power, uh, water rather, um, can be served with sewage. Yes. Uh, and, and just relining those existing lines? As far as relining it, we got a concrete line and then we go to clay by relining it. Uh, we had a choice one engineer double check our uh, flows and they said that it would handle that 54 units. Okay. Um, so while I have the floor, um, I'll go ahead and go to this other question, although it might not be, but you can speak to it as, as, as best you can. So there was concern or questions, and, and I don't uh, necessarily do, uh, disagree, I'm, I'm sort of ambivalent right now, about uh, the request for a traffic study. So I guess my first question would be, was me before I lived here, uh, you know, there was that medical center there right. that probably had a bunch of cars, some number of vehicles coming in and out of that space. Right. Um, do we have any idea what traffic issues might have existed back then? That I cannot tell you. Okay. Does anybody know? I remember it. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I sure, tell cars you went in, cars probably, went out. <laughs> I'll say that that's probably one of the most dangerous intersections we have in town is right there at that intersection. And this is not going to help out the matter, but uh, the report that I seen showed that there was not a need for it. But as the public works director, I do feel there's a need for it. So we will be doing our own. For, for the traffic study? For the traffic study, okay. because if it's a matter of putting up a traffic light or making a turn lane for public safety, we got to do it. So, so I, and then to follow up on that, doing our own, does that mean we have the capability to do it ourselves or we no, need to I will, I will hire it out. And so we would, the village would be paying for that? Absolutely. Okay. Any idea what that would cost? I do not know. I've, I'm checking into it right now. Um, I, w I would also suggest that um, if we go through the process and Homeic applies for the grant and is successful, 
uh, since the traffic light would be on a state route and ODOT would have to approve it anyway, Correct. maybe we can get them to do I've the traffic study. Into it. Yeah. I've okay. talked to Bob Geyer and they referred me to ODOT and I've talked to a uh, contact over there. Already. Tommy? Mm -hmm. No, not Steve. Tom. Scott. So if there ends up being a need for a traffic light put there to improve safety, Correct. chances are favorable that ODOT would I, I, I'm about? not going to say favorable, but we'll certainly Possibly, ask. Within the realm yeah. of possibility. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. I really think that's all I have. I think I was prepared more to pontificate about some other things, but I will. Uh, <laughs> now, mind you, if a traffic light is required to go there, ODOT will not do it. It will be at the village money to go. But we have to get their permission. We have we? to get their permissions, but it will be on the village money that we have to install it, and that's. Do you know what a light costs? About uh, 225000 uh, But you mentioned a turn lane also could... could a turn lane could be on Herman Street. Okay. But that could to do a lot of what you might be trying to divert yeah. without the light. Correct. Okay. Um, Thanks, Kevin. Sure. While uh, Johnny's up here, Lisa, do you have any questions that would be for Johnny? No, actually, um, as infrastructure princess, <laughs> on my honorary title, um, I was also going to ask about, about sewer. Um, yeah. You know, because it's a lot of people and Correct. wastewater. I'm so. glad you said people. <laughs> yes, as opposed to what you said earlier yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that that was my concern as well. Yep. Okay. And you know, whenever I think about about scale or size, I mean, I think a lot of people here know that I've expressed concern about scale, um, but it has nothing for me to do with like aesthetics or cuteness or village feel. It, it just has to do with the ability of the block to take all that. So thank you. Right, and it will take up. I mean, we won't have no more after we have them on it, and then the fire department will be going down Zinga Avenue. Mm -hmm. There won't be no more available, but there's no more development down that area because that's a straight shot all the way to Corey Street. Um, great, thank you, Johnny. Um, so Kevin, that, the, that was all of your questions. I'm going to say for now. Okay, great. Uh, Lisa, did you have any questions for anyone else? I do. I have um, two questions specific to qualifying conditions. Um, one was uh, about mix of types. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, I'll just put my two questions out because I would guess the same person might answer them both. Um, I, I wondered uh, if at the time, uh, when you were first envisioning this, if you had considered a possibility of having uh, some designated senior with family kind of multi-generational units to have a mix of types, presumably that could happen organically because seniors may have someone living with them. But I just wondered if there was an intentional consideration of that. Um, my other question has to do with um, the qualifying condition about co-housing. Um, I've heard, you know, I, I think I first really started thinking about it after the Antioch College charrette, the idea of having kind of small bedroom pods with a central shared kitchen. And I realized perhaps that takes up more space, but I wondered if is part of the design, if any co-housing, uh, larger unit co-housing had been considered. Hi, I'm Emily Seibel with Yellow Springs Home Inc. And I might need to call on Wes because he's our tax credit expert. But um, my understanding is that there are a lot of rules about what you can and can't do when you're going to apply for this funding. And so um, each, each apartment will have to have its own kitchen. I think that's just part of the rules. Um, but the design does allow for some flexibility in terms of having um, little kitchen areas, places where people can gather. A big emphasis in the design is placed on um, reducing isolation and creating opportunities and incentives for people to interact with each other. Um, and so, I, and then I think it's a similar answer to the family housing piece that um, I think with seniors it's very re heavily regulated. Is that Wes has more to say about this. So. so in Ohio housing, 
creates their own housing policies, which we have to follow. So um, in the senior uh, realm, uh, the age limit is 55 and older. And uh, you're allowed to, for example, if someone, it's independent living, but if someone uh, needed an aid to come in to assist, which we are going to help coordinate, by the way, if, uh, you know, as part of our supportive services programs, uh, there's actually, if, especially if there was a two-bedroom unit, which we will have some two-bedroom units, that aid, regardless of age, can live with the resident. So that's a, a plus for the resident. As far as having true intergenerational, the housing policy that is set at the state level, that's not a part of it, and neither is the co-housing uh, as far as the tax credit world that we're in. So it's the only other caveat, as I think about it, is that let's say uh, a senior has, uh, uh, let's say it's over the summertime, that a grandchild would want to visit from Indianapolis, pick a, t pick a town, and they can stay there for 14 days uh, without, you know, obviously we're not going to put, you know, we, don't, we would not put them on a lease or anything like that, but that's, that's leeway, mm -hmm. if you want to call it leeway. So that's part of the uh, flexibility that uh, the code has or the housing policy has. So. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm Wes Young from St. Mary Development. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, sounds really in, in the right order, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. Those are my only questions for now. Okay, uh, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so Denise, I think one, this first one's for you. Um, and I guess it's related to parking. And so I want to better understand um, Maybe if you could just give it an overview, because I and I'm thinking a lot about um, having watched the meetings, the feedback, the recommendations, uh, the comments, and understanding that, you know, maybe we're looking at 54 spaces. There was you know talk about that you know, normally it might be 68, and I guess I just want to get a better feel. Right. For that. Well, the zoning code, which is what we follow when we look at the standards. Um, requires for senior housing 1.25 parking spaces per unit. So for 54 units, that's where you get that 68 number. Um, when Home Inc. and uh, St. Mary's Development Corporation turned in their uh, application, they requested for a one-on-one, -on -one, 54 units, 54 spaces. Um, in a discussion at the working session, um, there was a question of, well, what is their normal ratio? I believe Wes um, indicated that's like 7.7 .7 to every one unit. Um, so that brings it down to more around 40 some spaces. Right. So there was a, a request for them to let's see what that looks like um, in the design plan. And so they did submit that. Um, and then the uh, at the planning commission meeting um, in the uh, recommendation or approval process, um, they did say uh, that they approved the 42 with um, the allowance of being able to expand to 54 if there was the need for that. Okay. So that's kind of how that evolved. And um, can you just give your feelings about, um, uh, I mean, how do you feel about the parking? Um, it's, uh, I know Wes did say that um, uh, in the meeting that, you know, the average age uh, for some of their properties is in their 80s. Um, if, if the, you know, I don't know if that's because of an aging out because of the, how old the, the properties are now, and maybe he can answer that. But um, if it's 55 and above, I, you know, I think 54 might be needed. Um, it is uh, in a location where um, unlike their other locations that are have much more uh, or better connectivity to like uh, the bus lines at like the VA center where they have one one project um, we have our cat system and we have but they're not they don't go as often as 15 or 20 minutes like you would in Dayton um, and uh, then we do have the senior center who um, their director did stand up and say that she said if anybody needs to go anywhere um, they'll be happy to accommodate them so 
And what about visitors? Uh, right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good. And so I, I'll, I think that's what I had for you. And so I guess I'll ask Wes or so Emily. What, yes. You might, um, well, and then this may not be yours, but we have read a lot of stuff and I'm trying to decide where I read this or if I really read it. Maybe I just dreamt it. Um, about there potentially being some coordination between uh, the fire department, um, um, friends care, and whatnot, in terms of unused parking spaces um, in those locations for whatever use. Is that is there some conversation? I, I think it was posed just like you just posed it. Right. But so, there, somebody I, dreamt it too. Just uh, no. I mean, like <laughs> there is there there is that possibility, but I don't know that anything's actually been solidified okay. yet. I can't answer that. That would have to be Oming. And then just one formal thing about the the numbers: of 42 and 54. Mm -hmm. If 42 are actually built, there will be designated space and funds set aside to move to 54. Easily. Well, that was the recommendation okay. by, by the Planning Commission that if you want to start with 42, make sure that as long as there that there is room available for that need, if it, if it proves itself that they're going to need more than that, that they can expand to that. And mm -hmm. that would be on them to, to expand that. Okay. So then, thanks, Denise. Um, I'll, I'll okay. just jump in. The, the idea was to have as much green space as possible. That was That was the rationale for keeping trying to have fewer parking spaces if needed it can happen but mm -hmm. if not needed then there's more green space right. and i yeah okay. and i do want to follow up with this a little bit more and i don't know if it's wes or emily but um and i certainly am not advocating for adding more asphalt um and you know contributing to you know stormwater issues uh, but you know, I, I was I was intrigued by what Linda Radalski said about um, golf cart parking. Um, there were some other interesting things along those lines. So I guess I'd just like to hear from your perspective as well about this. Okay. Um, yeah. So we are obviously very interested in creating alternate modes of transportation. So, I mean, one example of that is uh, we plan to talk to green cats about actually having a dedicated bus stop at the building uh, partnering with the senior center friends care has already uh, invited partnerships and they have some transportation options in a van um, and then uh, i know saint mary in the past has gotten uh, grants post award for adult trikes trikes is that right yeah so we would be looking into some community trikes uh, elder trikes, and then we would also be looking at um, probably doing a fundraising campaign for golf carts and ha trying to put something like that in place. Because actually, in a lot of the listening sessions, people suggested that, and we think it's a really good idea. Um, it's not something we can commit to and be until after the award is made because there's such scrutiny on cost per unit that some of the fundraising for this cool stuff would happen post award, if right. that makes sense. Um, so a couple, I guess, kind of related questions. Is there any kind of, um, I don't know, policy for limiting that you only get one spot per unit or something like that? That would be a West question. Is there a policy? Not, not typically. <laughs> okay. Uh, but what we... Yeah, and you should come to the mic yes, so that... and it, it's Wes Jeff from St. Mary's. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't have to do that again, though. <laughs> I know, but I'm a little levity. Sure. And, uh, so, obviously, the, the age mix in a, in a particular project is, you know, that's, that's you know, cars are, you know, a number of cars kind of based on that, but typically, for example, uh, at the VA, at Lions Place, too, I know we, Kevin and uh, Mary Ann and Patty, all uh, visited that uh, location. So there's plenty of parking there. It's, all, it's about a one-to-one. -one. And we rarely have a lot of cars there. But that population might be, you know, that's different than this population or that population. So I'm not going to say, oh, it always is this. I just, mm -hmm. I just can't do that. But it's typically around, you know, half the people have cars. Okay. But I really, this is really a a potentially a great location because of Greencast, because of the Senior Resource Center, and the, even the walkability, mm -hmm. you know, for the younger seniors to be able to walk downtown. 
So we were excited about that. Um, what we would do uh, on the parking if the 42 was allowed, I would go ahead and reserve dollars to, in good conscience, because if you, if, if the, the village came back and said, we, you know, I know we want to limit the parking, but if we really needed it, we got to have the money to do it. Mm -hmm. So we would be disciplined in order to do that. We would, we would reserve that money. And then there, I guess down the road, there might be a possibility if we're, if, if we could see that it's, it's not needed, then maybe we can you know, add an amenity to the building. I, I would, wouldn't even know what that buy, might be. Buy a fleet of golf carts. We could buy a fleet of golf carts. <laughs> Great. But, I, yeah, I think our, our position is we want to defer to the village on, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think we feel yeah, passionate about 42 <coughs> versus 54. The, the so way I would do it to be safe is the, the cost differential is not really an issue because we have to reserve for the 54. Right. But if you thought that 42 was going to create, and it would, more green space, which we like too, uh, that would probably be the way to start out, um, uh, in my opinion. So then uh, kind of a follow-on question uh, related to visitors. Um, so, okay, so let's suppose we hypothetically say 54, and then we think about visitors. Um, would there be room to have sort of a separated visitor parking lot so that you still like have a nice you know green space footprint um could that fit into the plan we can uh we ordinarily don't do that but we could certainly check and see if it's allowed now obviously we're going to have the proper handicap spaces per code right you know that'll be there um, but i'm guess i guess i'm thinking that visitors will not need to be as close to the building and that we might still be able to you know have that same kind of nice you know continuous green space um but i guess i just want to understand what the possibilities are Where's rob? Can, can oh. you? Hi, rob. He's right <laughs> <laughs> this is our architect okay. Hi, rob, rob hummison with ata bahars um i think it would depend on how many spaces we're talking total i mean if you're talking about more spaces than the 54 um, then that's going to take away on the site some of the amenity space that we're using currently mm -hmm. uh, now certainly within that 54 um, we could separate off a certain number of spots for visitors a certain number for residents um, i've never seen that done because it they tend to just kind of flow I, i'm not sure there'd be a real reason to to pull apart one versus the other. Okay. Um, and what happens if uh, if we talk about more than 54? Again, um, what we've tried to do is balance on the site uh, the uh, parking versus uh, green space and um, amenities, and we've got some uh, um, pathways and gardens, et cetera. And so we'd essentially have to take some of the space that we're using for those. Okay. It, it is, I mean, normally in my experience, it's a pretty good rule of thumb that it's cheaper to put it in during the original installation than later. So if, if there's an expectation of needing more spaces, it's cheaper to do it during the original construction than to try to do it as a supplemental thing later. Would you agree with in, that? In, or? in general, yes. Um, the way we're, the, the plan we submitted with the reduced parking spaces, mm -hmm. we actually um, pulled some spaces off both ends. Um, so the drive lane is actually there. What we did is eliminate the spaces themselves. So if we went to put those back in, we wouldn't have to regrade we wouldn't have to create extra drive lanes or any of that. It's, it's a fairly um, minimal <coughs> put in. Now you're right, you know, if you buy <coughs> X amount of asphalt today versus buying a little bit more two years from now, yeah. it, it's a marginally more expensive. But uh, I, I don't think it's a, a great big cost. No. Okay, great. I have one more question. Um, who decides uh, who gets the units so i understand uh, you know I, I i've read everything about the the list and the requirements and and very good details about you know income versus assets all that's very clear to me but i'm, I'm not really clear on how those choices are made sure so um 
There is a third party property management company who would be brought in. Um, they'll have to be ex have experience and capacity. It's usually national church residencies is the is the um, have go to for St. Mary. Um, and so essentially, as soon as uh, the project is funded, local seniors will be able to join a first come first serve interested party list as soon as the project is approved. And then the interested party list will have the name, address, phone number, and unit preferences of everyone on the interest list. And then once the project is, now we're looking at you know 2021 um, best case scenario. Once the project is within 120 days of building completion, the property managers will notify everyone on the interested party list that will begin taking applications. Um, and then at the time of application, uh, everything will have a date stamp, so it's first come, first serve. Um, and then typically, most of those on the initial interest list are from the areas, in some cases, um, moving back to the area. I think that's what, that, that's from an official statement from National Church Residencies. Um, and then, of course, we'll be balancing that with our commitment to fair housing marketing. Okay. Yeah. Does um, that answer your question? Yeah, that's... I, th I think I mainly just was curious about that third party. Uh, I didn't see that reference, so I didn't know. Oh, it's it was a footnote in tiny print. Oh. So <laughs> I thought I read all I these thought footnotes. I was reading it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, trying to not overwhelm you <laughs> with this see? information. All right. Well, thank yeah, but yeah. Thank you. Otherwise, yeah, I understand. So the, it's through yeah. an objective process, but it's first come first serve, right. and um, we anticipate that a lot of local seniors will be on that interest list. In fact, over. There are already over 50 seniors in Yellow Springs on um, these types of interest lists for this kind of housing. So. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so I think at this point, we're gonna turn to community comments. Um, so Judy has set the timer for two minutes. Um, I am not gonna be really strict about that, but since I know we have a lot of people that want to speak, I'm gonna, encourage that you're succinct um, but if you need more time uh, we can go up to three but again um, keep in mind that we do have and have looked at all the comments that have been made at the last two planning commission meetings we read all the letters um, but again what i think will be most useful is to help us think about these review standards that we'll be going through next so with that, um, first on the list, I have Jillian Ewalt. The clarion call for affordable senior housing has been heard loud and clear. <clears throat> it's been reiterated via the touching stories of the individuals in need, and I think many of us here can agree that there is a need for affordable senior housing in Yellow Springs. I also hope that we can think very, very carefully about the long-term implications of this project and the consequences that allowing this type of development will have for future generations. First, there's the impact that this facility will have on its immediate surroundings. My family currently lives in the neighborhood where the Home Inc. complex is planned and the potential project has raised concerns for me, uh, particularly as a mother with a toddler. Um, it engenders anxiety about traffic, parking, safety, environmental issues, and neighborhood density. Are we sending a message to our children that the precious few green spaces within our neighborhoods are no longer valued? I don't want my evening walks and free-spirited play to be obscured or deterred altogether due to heavy traffic. I envision a neighborhood where my child can play catch and kickball, and this has turned into an image of a busy thoroughfare that is best avoided. Lastly, and perhaps more importantly, I think there are long-term community-wide implications of allowing this type of development, and I hope that we can all very seriously consider what direction this town is headed in terms of what development is considered acceptable and responsible, no matter how worthy the cause. Where as a community will we draw the line? 
with all sincerity, I ask you to think more creatively and more responsibly about filling a need like afford affordable senior housing. And I urge <laughs> council to seriously reflect on how this type of development will impact families and future generations. Please don't drive young families in this neighborhood out. This sets a precedent that has serious permanent consequences and it will compromise the quality of life for future generations in Yellow Springs. Thank you. Thanks, Julian. Um, Judy, let's not use the timer and just let people know when there's two minutes. Like you want it loud. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, it's a new timer, folks. It's, right. it's the I, first time. I, I, I do sometimes want it loud. So, <laughs> that's, no, that's fine. Yeah. I've got it ready to go on my uh, thing, and it'll make a. a It'd be nice to have the timer Gentle without the beeping. beeping. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll figure uh, out that we'll function. Figure it out. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Susan Stiles. I'm going to uh, hold off because okay. I wrote a letter. Okay, thanks, Susan. Um, okay, uh, Richard Lapides. I'm Richard Lapides, and um, that was very well said, Miss, uh, and it's very important. Um, the projects that, this is a very complicated project, and it's been worked on by people who are knowledgeable for a very long time, I would say years. Um, everyone who's thought through it has discovered how complicated it is and how difficult it is to balance all the issues, including the impact on the neighborhood and the impact on the present situation, which we've been wrestling with for, oh, 10 years, unsuccessfully. Um, and the real estate cascade that will happen if our senior citizens have an alternative and are thus not forced to leave town in many cases, uh, breaking their relationship with their lifelong friends and losing their, the continuity of their lives. Um, so I think that the project is the right thing to do. Will it be disruptive for some families in that neighborhood? Possibly. Will it uh, be, lend itself to the graceful continuity of the village? Probably it will. Will it bring young, more young families to the community? One thinks it probably will. That's the attitude I would say as a former school board member. And goodness knows we need more young families. Uh, to maintain our schools. So with, with deference to the people in the neighborhood, uh, many of whom do approve but aren't in the specific circumstances that you're in this, um, I would say that the, the overall good that this project does for the community greatly outweighs the imperfections of the site and of the other things that are being mentioned. Furthermore, I've heard of no alternative method. I don't think anybody in the village knows of an alternative method for solving our problem. If there was an alternative method and the money to finance it, it would have been done already long ago. And we wouldn't be going through this over and over. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Um, Pat Brown. I just wanted to say that we need to balance principles, rules against needs and values. And I think that the rule that we're bending is going from four story to three story. And I think that that's an important one to bend because the value of having housing for the seniors and the value of meeting affordable, uh, affordable housing far outweighs one four. <laughs> is the way I see it. And I think that that, I, I think we should, and I think that site is a good site. It's right by, this, by the already senior housing that we have with French Care. It's behind already a commercial building. 
I don't think that there's going to be that much traffic. Believe me, we seniors, we don't drive a lot. <laughs> we, we walk, I mean, we, we don't, we're not about a lot. I mean, people like to walk. I walk all the time. I walk with my dog all the time. So I don't think you're going to find all this traffic. Most of the senior buildings I visited in other communities, half of the parking lots are almost vacant because people don't have cars. So I think we're we're thinking uh, we're, we're think we're we're thinking of problems that may not occur, and I might be wrong, but that's the way I feel. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Pat. Um, Chris, on journal. Hi, Chris Bongiorno. I am a, an adjacent homeowner um, and also the board president of Home Inc. And um, trying to be careful to speak to some of the concerns that Brian had about uh, staying on topic on the kind of the exceptional pieces of this project. I, I do want to just start by saying this is an exceptional project. This is an exceptional process. And I think this is an exceptional opportunity. And I'm glad that we're able to come through to this point um, and evaluate this project in this way. Um, as I think the most important piece here is my, uh, in, in terms of my unique perspective here, is as um, an adjacent homeowner who lives directly across the street. Um, and I feel like these issues that have been brought up by the council today and by the planning commission over the past two sessions um, have been at the very top of mind, the very front of the conversation that the development team, being Home Inc. and St. Mary's, have had with the adjacent property owners uh, and, and tenants since day one. And I feel like they've been handled and dressed very satisfactorily, um, both to me and to several of the neighbors that I've met with personally. Um, and I do apologize, and I hope we can have a follow-up conversation that not everybody was able to have um, personal meetings. But uh, I look forward to having additional conversations with people who are still concerned. Um, but I'm somebody who has three young children. I'm also somebody who coordinates safe routes to schools, programs for uh, the village schools. So I, I'm, I'm going to be looking at those things very specifically in my daily life. Uh, and I feel that the project team has addressed those concerns um, very well. Um, and then just lastly, from a homing capacity standpoint, um, this is something that has been looked at for this organization as an opportunity for years. Uh, it's finally coming to fruition, and I feel like the Home Inc. staff and board, uh, as well as the development partner in St. Mary's, um, are making this possible from a capacity standpoint where some organizations couldn't. Um, so I thank you for that. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Judith Hempfling. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. I, I did write you a letter, but I, I feel like I, I wanted to say it so the community could hear it because I hadn't really thought about it uh, until I started thinking about writing a letter to you guys. Um, one thing is that the village, you know, most of the village, uh, when we think about the issue of harmony and we think of many of our, com of our neighborhoods as harmonious, they're not harmonious in the, in the sense that all the houses are the same size, um, they're <coughs> the same income, which is the way a lot of modern day neighborhoods are built, uh, but they're this mix. They're this beautiful, harmonious, and diverse mix of different kinds of homes. That's something that's unusual. I mean, my street, there's all these little starter homes, then there's some really nice, uh, I mean, not that those little starter homes aren't nice, but some that are more expensive homes uh, that you know have more grandeur to them. Then there's, you know, in some parts, there, we have very few multifamily uh, apartment buildings, but I think it is something we are going to have to look to the, to the future. And in the neighborhoods where there are multifamily apartments, uh, they fit very harmoniously as well. I tried to provide you guys with this panoramic view because I used to live in Amherst, Massachusetts, a very beautiful town. Uh, and in the downtown, there's an 80-unit affordable housing, uh, senior housing, uh, right across the street from a very traditional kind of historic, I mean, not fancy, but historic uh, neighborhood. And it's just across the street. And the building is very close to the street. And there's trees. And it's, it's very beautiful there. It's very harmonious. Uh, I would think all that green space, that extra green space that's going to be preserved would be a good place for children to play in the, from the neighborhood. And, you know, elders like to see children. And, you know, so I would think there could be a nice, uh, you know, 
connectivity around that. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to say uh, out loud is um, that, you know, we've been passing certain kinds of uh, visionary legislation around housing. And I know I said this in my letter, and I want to urge you guys that, the, you know, if there are disconnects between our uh, PUD, our zoning code, and some of these visionary statements in sort of the goals of the village, um, you know, if, there's, if, there, if it's not really clear that they connect, then I think there, that you guys directing planning commission staff to find ways to bring those, those documents in alignment. Um, thank you. Thanks, Judith. Um, Kevin, I know you want to speak on this? Okay. Um, so just because you're not on my list, if there are any other citizen comments, uh, uh, we can uh, welcome those at this time. Mitzi? Well, I just, uh, Mitzi Miller, I have a couple questions. Uh, one is on traffic, um, just questioning the two streets on either side. Is there parking on either side of the street allowed? I don't think so. Does anybody know? Johnny, is there parking? I don't think so. I think uh, once you pass the site, there is some off street parking there for residents. Herman and Livermore. And then there is mm -hmm. a pool off area on uh, Marshall on both sides. Okay. Okay, I, the, the reason I'm asking is um, I'm familiar with a independent uh, living facility in Springfield, which is Oakwood Village, um, and it's, I believe it is three stories. And each resident there is allowed one parking area or one parking spot if they have a vehicle. I'm assuming that would not be the case. It would just be open parking. Am I right? Is that right? Uh, but they, they truly did have a problem there with guest parking. So um, I just am concerned a little bit about where guests will be parking if there is going to be an arrangement with the fire station and friends care. Um, so anyway, I wanted to bring that up. And then the other concern I have is uh, the cost of the infrastructure. Who pays for that? Is it our city and taxpayers? And if we are going to need a traffic light, um, who pays for that? Uh, is that, again, our city having to pay for those expenses for this facility? Those okay. are my questions, really. All right. Thanks, Mincy. Um, I mean, I think we did hear that uh, the traffic study would um, be paid for by the village. The traffic light, it sounded like, would be paid for by the village if we went um, that direction. Yes. The, the relining of the sewer, the uh, traffic study, the traffic light, those things would all be paid by the village. Now, Home Inc. did say that they would try to get um, additional funding to offset, I believe, part of the sewer relining. Um, or, but, um, but yes, typically those things would be village funded. Okay. And I do want to point out, I, I think what Kevin raised about the fact that there was a medical facility there historically, uh, is, is something to ponder. All right. Because it means that there was active traffic at one time. I, yeah. I was just going to say it's, it's in the past. One of the packets <laughs> that you've looked at, but um, we did. We're, we're in the process of finalizing the budget right now, and we did include a line item to commit up to fifty-six thousand dollars for infrastructure, um, and we can firmly commit to up to fifteen percent in excess of that, if depending on what the final cost is. If it's more than that, we'd have to re reassess the budget, but that would include our aid to construction costs that are always the developer's responsibility. Um, for example, I think that that would be the transformer, the transformer yeah. uh, for electric. But then we've also committed to um, to the extent possible and, and definitely um, the covering the quote that that uh, Johnny brought to planning commission, we can cover we can pay to reline that sewer. Um, and so that would be another $27,000 that we would commit to the project. Um, in terms of traffic, 
obviously the vil that the village has to do its own due diligence but we did pay a, a professional traffic planning firm um, to commission just a preliminary report and they said that the impact from this particular development would be classed uh, and considered very low impact and would not warrant uh, an additional study and I know that letters in your packet I just wanted to call attention to that that we take traffic seriously too but in our initial research into it it, it didn't appear that this would cause a problem if there's already a problem there that's a different discussion but I don't think that this project will add mm -hmm. to 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 it significantly right. and then otherwise um, I, I mean and I I think it's been made clear but the structure itself that is being uh, built by uh, st. Mary's and home Inc so structure uh, the the building it's the cost just, of in the building. just in terms of like making sure we cover all costs and so yes yes so we're we, it's not coming from the village if we're allowed to proceed we would be um, seeking an eight approximately eight million dollars in tax credits which are awarded and it's actually not dollars it's a tax deduction that we then sell on an open market through an equity syndicator it's very complicated but essentially we need we need about eight million dollars of the ten million dollar price tag to make and keep the rents affordable and pay for construction Okay. Thanks, Emily. Um, did you want to say that? Yeah, I, I just have a couple of, of quick thoughts that I think council should be aware of because, um, Brian, you did say that there used to be, you and Kevin, there used to be the clinic there and the traffic in and out, and, and that is true, and I wasn't here when that happened, but also I think we need to keep in mind that Friends Care has been steadily increasing and expanding their independent living during that time. So they have also added back into the traffic that disappeared when the clinic um, left. So there is that to consider. Um, and also, one thing about the transportation that I think we need to keep in mind is that um, it's my understanding that Green Cats just lost their contract <coughs> with Green Inc., which was um, a part of their funding. And so I'm not sure whether there will or will not continue to be um, lines that come to Yellow Springs. I don't know anything about that other than I know they lost their contract. So it, I don't know that that will or won't happen. I don't want to say it will. I'm just saying it's something that I understand did happen. It's a large part of their funding. Okay. Were you going to say I, something? Yeah. yeah, I'd like to say something about traffic. I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking about Friends Care. I've been on the Friends Care board and visited people there. So I started thinking about the traffic from Friends Care. There's 68, I think 68 uh, long-term care units. That means 68 people living there, being cared for, having visitors. Um, about 18 people who live in the, uh, co the uh, duplexes there who uh, come back and forth. Um, then the assisted living facility, which has I think 17 uh, units. Um, and then all the people that work there. All of that traffic, I I'm going to suggest, is probably proportional to the traffic that would come in and out of this facility. And so I called Becky Baker, whom I know, who works there, and said, well, have the neighbors ever complained about traffic? Or have you had any complaints about traffic? And she said, no, not, not that she knows of. So my sense is, is that the traffic would be low impact. Now, it's not just this building that would be going here, it's the fire station. Mm -hmm. And my concern in some ways is more, in terms of safety, uh, is more about the fire station because, you know, those vehicles go out and they have to go out quickly. And so I, I think traffic is a concern, but for me, it's more about the fire station. Okay, thanks. Uh, Athena, did I see your hand? Yeah, I'm just a little bit confused, maybe because I came late. Is everybody going to the podium? Did I miss the vacation plans? Yes. Um, okay, any other comments? Yes. Volta. Uh, yeah, so, hi, I'm Malta von Matheson, 
And you probably know more about this, Marianne, than I do. But my recollection is that the original land on both sides of Herman Street was owned by Serge Vernet. And a group of docks here in town um, wanted to build a new facility. So they went to uh, Serge. And he said, OK, I got this piece of land. And that's how the clinic got started, because they actually moved from the building, Brian, where you have your office. Hmm. Um, and then Serge owned the land on the other side of um, Herman Street. And then this whole discussion started to happen around uh, the uh, Friends Care Center, or the uh, Quaker um, home. And I, my recollection is that um, Serge and Hardy Trollander and some of the other village elders kind of took the initiative on that. It was very controversial because it was, uh, again, it was this whole idea of having seniors live in a vertically integrated community. So you had a nursing home, you had um, independent living, assisted living, and, and skilled nursing, everything. So I just think that from my perspective, having been here, in Yellow Springs, living here since 1961, that um, there's been a sort of migration as we've gone along. And this just seems to me to be a natural next step in terms of how we sort out the issue of homes for seniors who want to live in a more affordable environment and have access to all of the uh, facilities that are right across the street. So that's, those are my thoughts. OK. Thanks, Malta. Uh, any other comments from citizens? Emily? I, I, I won't take much time. I just wanted to have a chance to respond to some of the things that were said before we move to the next section. And so um, the first thing I wanted to say is, Jillian, um, I really heard you. Um, I think we heard you and we would love to get together with you and listen to the concerns that you have. Um, as Chris said, we're sorry that we didn't get a chance to do that before this. Um, and so maybe there are some ways that we can, can be responsive as developers. I know one of the things we're thinking of doing is um, putting some playground equipment and some of the green space on the site, just as one example. But I mean, we, anyway, I'm just saying I, I heard you and I noted it and I'll, we'll be reaching out to you. Um, and then I also appreciated Mitzi's um, concern about uh, guest parking. And so we will definitely be continuing the conversations with uh, Miami Township Fire Rescue and Friends Care Community about overflow parking. And then obviously whatever you decide about the, the, the parking um, as it stands now as on the site too. But we can certainly explore um, and commit to exploring that through further discussion. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Any other comments? Yes, Pat. Just one quick comment about transportation. I mean, about yeah, <clears throat> the traffic. I mean, I, I drive often people to the Friends Care, to the rehab center, and honestly, I never see any cars. The little bit of backup that is when I get into the rehab, Sometimes there's a few cars there letting people off. But believe me, there's no traffic there. And think of all the people who live there. And I know this is going to bring more traffic, but I think it's going to be on the minimum. I really do. OK, thanks. Any other comments? Uh, yes, Carmen. I'm Carmen Milano, and I apologize, I, I don't know all the things that were read off about the guidelines, but one of them jumped out about enhancing village life and experience, and I certainly think that we've heard so much from, I am a senior citizen, and from our senior citizens of wanting to have a safe place, be able to live in community, possibly, and I think a big thing, correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, there will be elevators? Yeah. Okay. So there's not a building in this village, I believe, that has elevators. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody has one. But, um, but one of the big things is as you age that you want to be with other people and you want to be safe. And part of that safety is being able to use an elevator to go up and down and get in and out and all of that kind of thing. And to be able to age in place in that way. And the, the power of 
coming up with 54 units. I've been here since 99 with all the arguments about affordable housing and so many that haven't been approved. 54 units at a time of affordable housing and then the cascade effect of the housing units from let's say just half of those people come from right here in the village, out of rentals, out of owned home, uh, home ownership, is just a tremendous, powerful impact on what we have available for housing in this place. So quality and quantity are right there at the same time, and safety. And years ago when my mother was alive and aging, a very wise woman said to my sister and I, it's not your your job to keep her happy at this point because you can't do everything, but it is your job to keep her safe. And that is a huge element of this location. Doesn't mean people aren't gonna use the stairs, but sometimes you can't. Thanks. Thanks, Carmen. Um, any other comments? Okay, so this is uh, an opportunity for council members to uh, add any comments that they would like to make before we go through the process of the review standards. Um, so uh, does anyone have any comments that they would like to make at this point? What Kevin? I'm not going to pontificate as much as I said I was. <laughs> um, you know, but people have uh, been here, as Malta and Carmen mentioned, uh, you know, all these years we've been trying to do this. And, and if I understand right, if we approve, then the project still has the great opportunity to have a one in three chance of actually getting the funding. Now, I don't know where that's a passing grade uh, uh, a, lo a lot of times, but you know, given, given that this is not a slam dunk uh, if, if we approve, and, and with all the number of opportunities that have come and gone, you know, it is my hope that, and, and yes, I work at the college, that both at the college and in the village, it's my hope that we're developing a greater appetite for doing more than just talking the talk, but actually doing these things. And, uh, and so I, I don't think anyone who lives in Yellow Springs should be the ones to say no. What I mean by that is if it's not going to happen, don't stop it here. L let it fail in the funding process. Let it, let it fail out there, if it's going to fail. I mean, let it, let, it, let it be somebody, let us blame those folks. Don't, I don't believe it should be us. And again, there's no guarantee that it will happen if we say yes. You know, but I, but, but I can guarantee you it won't happen if we say no. So I just don't think we should be the ones, and so maybe I'm, Maybe I'm divulging my, more of my thoughts, but I just don't think we should be the ones to, to say no. It's just giving a, a viable, not perfect, but a viable project an opportunity to succeed. And, and that's really all we're being asked to do, you know, not to guarantee it, but just give it an opportunity to, to play the game. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been said that it's, it wouldn't be the tallest building in town. It would just be the tallest non-exempt building. And only one third of it is that tall. So um, from a functional perspective, as I said earlier, um, you know, if we, can, if we can support the building from an infrastructure perspective, um, you know, and a lot of things have been said about transportation, but we recently uh, published an active transportation plan. And so, you know, just sort of chew on that for a while and it's like, what, what is that gonna look like? What is that gonna mean for us? And how much closer are we all gonna get to having fewer vehicles, you know, on the streets? You know, so if we take that seriously, in conjunction with this, we, we might just break even or have fewer cars. I live about 1.2 miles from where I work, and I drive more than I should. So I am making a commitment 
to start to resume riding my bike more. I have walked. I have ridden my bike. Um, but, but, but I'm making a commitment um, to the public that I serve uh, that I'm going to take this thing seriously and, and, and make a difference, make a change. So most of the time, I can attest that there will be one fewer car <laughs> <laughs> on the roads. Um, and again, there's a lot that could be said. Um, I, think I commend the folks who have put in all the hard work. If I were to summarize, um, I would say let, let's give our seniors a chance. Uh, if, if the baby boomers, the baby boomer generation means uh, what, it, what I think it means, and, and I'm one of them, we've we're got another 30 years to go before the newest baby boomers reach, you know, their late 70s. You know, so this, this is a project that needs to exist for the magic number, at least another 30 years. Um, so there you have it. All right. Lisa, did you want to say something? Sure. Um, first, I really want to say thank you to the many citizens who've taken the time to share their perspectives with me because I believe that it's my responsibility as a council person to listen and to take your thoughts in um, very seriously. And, and for me, it hasn't been a slam dunk, although I uh, know we need apartments, I know we need senior apartments, I know we need affordable senior apartments. Um, I'm also balancing that with my concern about the fiscal health of the government and the use of tax dollars and what I know we have to do coming up in terms of capital investment and repairs to what's under the streets and all of that stuff that's starting to keep me up at night as I learn more about it. Um, but I have a sense of confidence that um, our village manager and our future village manager who will be with us when this project happens and, and Johnny Burns and his team will be able to reevaluate the timing. I've been spending a lot of time talking about the designated community investment corporation and about how important collaboration and open thinking is. And I think it would be hypocritical to walk around talking about the importance of collaboration between the school board and the village and the township and then turn around and say, we can't pull off the collaboration that it will take to be successful with this project. I'm confident that we can. It won't be easy, but I think we have a vision and we set this as a goal. And I think we can do it. Um, and I, I really want to thank also Home Inc. and your partner, St. Mary's. You've come with so many answers to questions and the frequently asked questions document that looked at the affordability really was important to me because I wasn't confident about that. You made it crystal clear. And I also want to thank Denise Swinger and Judy Kintner and the members of the Planning Commission because this has been a lot of work. And I feel like this coming to the council um, is only a testimony to their dedication. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Marianne? Okay. I want to say a few things and then we're going to go through um, what's going to be a very detailed process, but very important that we carefully review a project of this nature. Um, so the first thing is I do want to reiterate uh, Lisa's thanks to the village team, to Planning Commission, uh, to Denise, to Judy, to Patty, because a lot of work has gone into bringing this uh, to council. Um, and uh, I really, as always, appreciate the citizen participation. And um, I, I really think that the, the work that has been done, um, yeah, so many uh, questions, so much information has, has been really helpful. Um, I certainly have not been uh, in the village as long as probably most of you. Um, but part of what I did in terms of due diligence to decide I was ready to be on council five years ago was learn a lot about the history. And one thing I know is that we have so often in the past not done anything 
because we are striving for the perfect. And that is really something I'm thinking about uh, in making my decision today. Um, and I've learned enough being in this seat for five years to know that, and, and Pat said it really well, that I have to think about balancing village goals, village values, and higher needs against maybe that ideal that we might all want to have, but it's just not practical. Um, I also think it's important to underscore that there is no doubt that this village, like every other community uh, in the world, is dealing with affordability and housing crises. And I think it's very important that we look at something like this seriously. And um, I like what Lisa said about uh, you know, this whole idea that we can come together and if we approve this kind of project, that we will figure out how to make it work. And I know that um, if that is the case, uh, that Planning Commission will make their focus next on how we make this work. And, and Council and the Village team will do that as well. Um, and finally, I, I'll end with, uh, I thought Richard Zoff's comments were very uh, interesting about how, uh, and it kind of underscores what I was saying about the striving for the perfect and, and realizing that can't happen. And what he talked about, if you didn't read his letter, was that we can't stop change from happening. Change will continue to happen, and these kinds of things are affecting our village. And so I really respect the organizations, our community, and the leaps of faith that our village team and council have taken to address these things head on. Uh, and you know, Lisa talked about infrastructure. We're dealing with housing and affordability. Uh, our justice system, I mean, a number of things, uh, you know, it makes my head spin every day. But it's really important work, and, uh, and I will end there and uh, move into uh, our uh, review process. So um, <coughs> let me explain how this is going to work. Um, uh, and, and Chris gave us some ideas, and also I want to say Chris and Judy, uh, please, if I am missing something, uh, help me along as well, uh, which you're always kind to do. Um, <coughs> but um, I want to highlight that uh, as Judy read, we need to go through each of these review standards and we need to vote on them, so we will do a roll call vote so that that is very clear along the way. At each standard, we will also um, have an opportunity to uh, suggest any modifications, um, whether we approve or uh, uh, reject the meeting of that standard. And um, it, it may be helpful to have this sheet in front of you as we go through. And I will say that it occurred to me that a is not the place to start, because that's everything. So I think we need to start with um, the second standard and then f end with A, because A is saying that we have, that we approve that it's meet, met all the standards. Where is that? Um, it's on page, hold on just a second and I'll tell you. Um, now I gotta get back to it. I, I didn't see it in my hard copy. It's it is page 80, 88 in the okay. electronic. No, no, that, that this is from Planning Commission. I'm seeing okay. on 77. But it is in there. It's, uh, um, because review standards are 1254 or 6. I, I have all that from oh, my okay. thing. The front of I just the reviews, don't have It's just in front of the document that gives you the whole review standards. If you're looking at the hard cat copy packet, it should be right in front of that. I'm in front of no, that's the minute. Oh, actually, that's it, right? Is it? Well, I mean, the information is here. It's just okay, and I'm and I'll be reading each one as well. Okay. Um, okay. So the first review standard that uh, we will consider is uh, 2054.06b, that the PUD will promote the intent and purpose of this chapter. Oh. I um, will note as we go through that um, this was that Planning Commission did not uh, approve that this standard was met. Um, and, and so I'll mention that as we go through just to have a review of the Planning Commission process. Um, we have right above 1254.01 the purpose. Uh, 
which I think I will just go ahead and read through really quickly. The plan unit development district is established as an optional development tool to permit flexibility in the regulation of land development to encourage innovation in land use, form of ownership and variety of design, layout and type of structures constructed to achieve economy and efficiency in the use of land to preserve significant natural, historical and architectural features and open space to promote efficient provision of public services and utilities to minimize adverse traffic impacts to provide better housing, employment and business opportunities particularly suited to residents, to encourage development of convenient recreational facilities and to encourage the use and improvement of existing sites when the uniform regulations contained in other zoning districts alone do not provide adequate protection and safeguards for the property and surrounding areas. It is the further intent of the PUD regulations to promote a higher quality of development than can be achieved from conventional zoning requirements in furtherance of the vision and goals of the adopted comp comprehensive plan and vision Yellow Springs and Miami Township. So, uh, Judy, could you, okay, so I guess, how, what do I do, ask? So I can, I mean, the, I can go ahead and roll call it. That's the way that you want to do it, is just go ahead and get a roll call and then speak to whether there are any, anyone sees any. So are we saying approve or reject at this point, so or what are we? I, um, it says it will promote <coughs> the intent and purpose. So an affirmative vote means it will promote the intent and purpose of this. Okay, program. that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So you ready? Yes. All right, Stokes. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Trigger. Yes. Housh. Yes. Okay. The next review standard is the proposed project will be compatible. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I want to ask at this point, are there any proposed modifications related to this review standard? Okay. Hearing none. The next one is the proposed project will be compatible with adjacent uses of land, the natural environment, and the capacities of public services and facilities affected by the proposed project. This again was not approved by Planning Commission. Um, Judy? McQueen. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Krieger. Yes. Housh. Yes. Uh, and are there any proposed modifications on this standard? Brian, I'd like to address that a little for a second. Um, technically, it's not a, it's not a, a proposed modification okay. of the review standard. The modification has to go to the preliminary development plan and the deviations from the zoning code. Okay. To the extent that you would like to talk about some of those issues, particularly as it pertains to the Planning Commission's recommendations and then the conditions, to the extent that you think one of these review standards might embrace those concepts, that might be the time for you to bring it up and, and discuss some of those issues. So you're suggesting well, I would say, for example, to the extent that the, the, the Planning Commission uh, had some discussions about the height, the density, those types of issues, and then they had the conditions that pertain to parking, and I can't remember what the what was the other one's uh, traffic, study. traffic study. To the extent that those concepts come up through your review, your the discussion of the review standards, because when you look at, at 1254.03, you look at the PUD requirements, then you get to D, modification of minimum requirements. We need to track back there at the end to determine if you get to the place where we have to discuss about proposed, the conditions that you might want to add on if you do approve it. Okay, so we are definitely going to talk about the two conditions that were proposed by um, Planning Commission. So you are suggesting that we do not talk about mo modifications until we go through the rest of these? I, I think that to the extent that you think that they, they may have an impact on the discussion later, I, I think it would be appropriate if you want to bring them up. I mean, this is your, your hearing after all. Um, but so then the question would be, does anyone want to discuss modifications? Is that? In the context, yes, overall, to say that this is something I want to discuss later. It's kind of a heads up to where okay. the discussion might evolve. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Okay, um, the next review standard um, is the proposed project will be consistent with the public health, safety, and welfare needs of the village. This one was approved by Planning Commission. Judy? Krieger? Yes. Stokes? Yes. McQueen? Yes. House? Yes. Um, so if somebody 
does want to jump in with a modification discussion, just say something. Uh, the next one, granting the PUD rezoning will result in a recognizable and substantial benefit to ultimate users of the project and to the community, which would not otherwise be feasible or achievable under the conventional zoning districts. This was not approved by Planning Commission. Judy. Stokes. Yes. Krieger. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Housh. Yes. The next one. The PUD will not result in a significant increase in the need for public services and facilities and will not place a significant burden upon surrounding lands or the natural environment unless the resulting adverse effects are adequately provided for or mitigated by features of the PUD as approved. And this was approved by Planning Commission. Judy? McQueen? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Half? Yes. <coughs> The next one, the PUD, PUD will be consistent with the village's comprehensive plan and vision, Yellow Springs and Miami Township, specifically the following, following planning principles shall be adhered to as applicable. Redevelopment and infill location should be favored over greenfield development. Natural features and resources should be preserved or at least conserved. Future development redevelopment shall strengthen the physical character of the village. Quality design is emphasized for all uses to create an attractive, distinctive public and private realm. Places are created with an integrated mix of uses that contribute to the village's identity and vitality. Diverse housing choices are found throughout the village, including relatively high density and affordable units. Parks, open space, and recreational areas are incorporated into future development and places are connected and accessible throughout the community by transportation methods other than automobiles. And this was not approved by Planning Commission. Judy? Stokes? Yes. Krieger? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Housh? Yes. And the penultimate one, the PUD will respect or enhance the established or planned character, use, and intensity of development within the area of, of the village where it is to be located. This was approved by Planning Commission. Judy? Stokes? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Housh? Yes. So when we go back to A, this is the one that says the PUD will comply with the standards, which we've just reviewed conditions and requirements of this chapter. And I will just reference that, <clears throat> where's my sheet? I marked all this stuff that uh, I'll just do a, a review of in terms of PUD requirements. Um, a is about permitted uses and that was approved by Planning Commission. B is about minimum lot size and zoning requ requirements. That was not approved. Connectivity was approved. Modification of minimum requirements was approved. Um, except for providing a mix of residential types such as single family, town home, or multiple family and employ low impact design or other best practices to manage stormwater and reduce the offsite impacts of runoff. And uh, open space <coughs> was approved. And the last two are just about existing PUDs, including the CBE, so that does not matter. So that is requirements. <coughs> And then the last thing is conditions. This is 125402. Recognizable benefit was approved by Planning Commission. Um, yep. Size was not approved by Planning Commission. <coughs> Utilities was approved. Ownership was approved. Comprehensive plan and vision was approved. Pedestrian accommodation was approved. Architecture was not approved. Traffic was approved. Eligible districts, oh, and that yeah. eligible districts yes. was approved. And am I missing a J or is that all? Of them? That's all, that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, Judy. So you are now ready for H. Uh, 
Okay, so a. now, sure. actually, we are now a. I'm sorry. we're now uh, calling Back the roll a. on A. Yes. Yes. Krieger. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Hosh. Yes. Okay. The last uh, two things, I think, are, did we say we are going to formally uh, make a decision about the recommendation from Planning Commission or just the conditions? Uh, I, would you now approve the, well, the <coughs> Now need to go to 1253-12503-D because the applicant um, for the PUD identified in writing intended deviations from the zoning requirements, uh, which include, for example, the lot size, and the modifications may be approved by Village Council during the preliminary development review stage, which is where you are now. Yeah. So now would be the time that you discuss those issues. And I would point out that under the criteria under subsection D, there are eight factors. Of those, the Planning Commission uh, recommended by majority vote that the PUD requirements set forth in 250403D, one, two, three, six, and seven were met. Okay. And so um, I think that you could then uh, agree to the, the requested deviations and then acknowledge the Planning Commission recommendation of the, the factors that were met that would lead to approval, if that's okay. what you want to do. So you are saying that we are looking at deviations for 4 and 5, D4 and 5, is that? And 8. No. Mm -hmm. The, well, yes. Let me let me let me catch up to you. I think eight was approved. Was it? Yeah. I, I just have four and five or not. Well, no, four and five don't need to be approved because if you look, it has the eight criteria. It just says the modifications shall also satisfy at least four of the following criteria. Uh, okay. Which was met. Right. Okay. So, do we need to? I think you need to acknowledge that the count that uh, if, if council is inclined that you it, it will approve the intended deviations because the criteria for uh, that would allow you to approve the deviation have been met. Okay. I don't know if I said that well, but I think you know what I meant. I think we. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you have, you have to accept the deviations mm -hmm. and that the fact that the criteria have been met. That's how I would say it. Right. Right. Um, okay, so now we are evaluating uh, uh, whether we approve these deviations. Uh, is there any? I think it would be good to say what the deviations are. All right. All right, Denise, I may need your help on this. But one of the deviations would be the size of the lot, uh, which council had considered whether or not that was going to phrase it this way, was a deal breaker and whether or not the applicants should go forward. Council to determine that it would consider the size being less than five acres. So that is one deviation that I think council would have to acknowledge and approve. Okay. And we, you think we should do these separately? I think you should. Okay. For purposes of the record. Okay. So the question is uh, whether we will approve the deviation in terms of size of the lot. Judy. McQueen. Yes. Stokes. Yes. Krieger? Yes. House. Yes. All right. And density of the units? Uh, right. Okay. okay. Density and, we'll, and then height. What, pardon me? Density, density and then, then height. height. But the density issue was how many units of the density? Um, it was uh, 28, 28 was the. Right. And there's a 54. So 26. So right. 26. Okay. So. Uh, so the question is, uh, do we approve the deviation to, uh, in terms of density, which uh, allows for 26 additional units? No, there was originally 28, additional. but there's 26 additional. Right. Yeah. So to, I think I said that correctly. 26 additional units. Yeah. Judy? Krieger. Yes. Stokes. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Hush. Yes. And then it sounds like the third deviation is about height. Mm -hmm. And this is, what was it, like 58 point something percent? 56. Oh, just that. Okay. 35 feet to 55 feet. Okay. And there was some percentage I saw. Okay. So uh, 
Do we accept the deviation on in terms of height? Judy? Stokes? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Housh? Yes. All right, now, for purposes of the record, what I would do, even though it's clearly implied by what the votes just were, I would then acknowledge that under 1254.03d, that at least four of the criteria identified in D1 through 8 have been met. <coughs> And, or you could simply adopt the recommendation of planning commission is the easier way to do it since okay. they found, they found this, that there were more than four met. Great. So uh, do we adopt the recommendation of planning commission on um, 1254.03D uh, about modification of minimum requirements? Judy? Stokes. Yes. Krieger. Yes. McQueen. Uh, question. Wasn't D, didn't Planning Commission vote no on? Well, but they, they voted that seven met, seven were satisfied, and we just need at least four. Right. So that's why we are well above the four. So even though they said no to four and five, the other seven, they said we're okay. Oh. Or the other six. Okay, um, yes. House? Yes. All right. Then do we need to uh, say something about the recommendation of Planning Commission yes, overall? You need, yes, you need to address those, the two conditions that they recommended that Council consider. But what about their ex actual recommendation not to approve? Do we need to? That was based upon the fact that they couldn't get the th requisite three votes to uh, Gotcha. approve the <laughs> application as submitted. Okay. So um, uh, I will just reference this again. Should Village Council approve the preliminary development plan and rezoning request, which we have, Planning Commission recommends the attached conditions. So let's do these individually. First, a traffic study coordinated by Village staff with consideration for the location of the Miami Township Firehouse and with input of the county engineer and Ohio Department of Transportation as needed. Judy? McQueen? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Housh? Yes. And then the second condition, approve parking with no fewer than 42 parking spaces, reserving additional parking spaces, spaces for expansion as needed for up to 54 parking spaces. Um, I would like to uh, make a recommendation to uh, amend that with language that incorporates the guarantee that that money will be set aside if that needs to happen. Okay. I wonder if we would want to modify it um, to designate a certain guest parking. Well. I I, I, you could do that, but there's also going to be another piece because keeping in mind now that council's gone this far, and I think that it appears that council is going to pr approve the application, is that what that means is when the site plan goes or the preliminary plan goes mm -hmm. back to planning commission, there's going to be details that are going to be worked out. And they can grapple with they that. They can grapple with that. You could certainly make a recommendation, that's a recommendation. that there okay. be a discussion of that. Yeah, that's okay. a recommendation. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to. Uh, Propose that the question is uh, with this qualifier that says and funds will be set aside if that is later needed. And before you vote on yes. that, I would like a representative of the applicant to acknowledge that those funds would be available affirmatively in light of that so that Thank we've you. got that on the record yep. that would reflect something if there were an issue that comes up. <laughs> Wes, is that, is that you? That's apparently so. Wes Young? On three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. we, we affirm that we will <laughs> yeah. we, we'll, uh, set aside dollars for 54 spaces. Yeah. I would do that anyway because there, you can't go back. You know, it's, it's a one-time one deal. So okay. we will put that aside. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Judy? McQueen? Yes. Krieger? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Ouch. Yes. 
Okay. Do we have anything left, Chris? Well, I think that you probably want to, in light of uh, the, the number of interested parties, just affirm that it will be placed on the council uh, agenda for January 7th, where the legislation to rezone the property will be have a first reading. Thank you. And I do want to emphasize we will not be reading this as an emergency. So this will have the normal two readings. So on January 7th and January 21st. And um, I have been assured that we will be able to get whatever you guys need to submit your application on February 21st. 22nd. 22nd. And it's actually the 22nd for the meeting because the 21st is Martin Luther King okay. Jr. Day. All right. So, okay. so the second okay. meeting it's is the, the 21st. 21st for us. <laughs> February 21st is the application. Right. Right. January 21st is Martin so Luther King. So we will King have 30 Day. days. Yes. Okay. We'll have 30 days. Yes. Patty and I have spoken about the mechanism that we can, we can still make that. Yes. But so that day, that 21st day still counts, but we yes. have to submit the application before the, the uh, yes. end of the day. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Great. Yeah, you're, you're fine, Emily, I promise. Okay, thank you. You're fine. And, and I want to say, you know, I know that, you know, again, in, in thanking the village team, I know a lot of effort went towards making sure that we could meet that deadline if we were going to approve this. So thanks, everyone. Thank you, Chris. Um, and uh, if you are not listening to the rest of the meeting, just uh, keep in mind that we have to leave the door open, so any conversations should be taken downstairs. And I would just, again, Brian, if I could, sure. like to like to thank the not only the Home Inc. team, but also my village team for everything that they've done. Everybody's put a lot of work into this. <laughs> okay. So. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay, we have two additional special reports. Next up is the Housing Advisory Board end of the year review. Did you see Kanetta out there? Marian? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, yeah. why don't we take a five minute break? That's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Way see, go, I'm just right. barreling through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, actually. Next on our agenda is the Housing Advisory Board end of the year review. Mary Ann. Yeah, so um, Kevin Magruder has graciously volunteered to give uh, a short uh, verbal presentation of our written report and uh, answer any questions, I guess, and talk about the goals for next year. Thanks. And since you have the report, I'll just highlight some things. I'm Kevin Magruder, and I'm a member of the Housing Advisory Board, and that is the Village Manager's Housing Advisory Board, uh, which Patty put together in probably the summer of 2017. And the other members are Denise Swinger, Judith Hempling, Karen Wentro, and Liz Voigt, uh, who's recently stepped off of the, uh, the board because of work commitments. Uh, the initial work of the board was to identify a consultant to do a housing needs assessment, which we did in the fall of 2017. That was Patrick Bowen of Bowen National Research. And they, he completed a housing needs assessment, a 400-page document. And just a top line, an uh, overarching <coughs> finding was that there was a re relative lack of available housing choices across the spectrum of size and price points for both home ownership and rental units. And Yellow Springs has a very <coughs> tight market, which is a driver, and it's relatively high cost. Once that report was done, we, and even actually in doing that report, uh, I wasn't just him doing research. He did surveys uh, over 500 people, um, both actually over 800 people in person and um, uh, by paper. And then in the spring of 2018, we did a series of community conversations where we presented PowerPoint summaries of his findings. And the purpose of that was we did four of them in different parts of the community, and that was to get feedback from the community to help us begin to think about what is the vision for housing in, in Yellow Springs. And in August, um, we 
council, as you know, uh, came up with a vision and value statement, and it's uh, about a paragraph long, but the top line of that is Yellow Springs has a housing stock that enables a diverse community to live and work here. <coughs> At that same meeting, uh, we had asked Patrick Bowen to come back and help us come up with goals for housing. And what he came up with was a goal of 500 units to be built in five years. Uh, a month after that, we held a uh, stakeholders meeting with uh, people from across the community, brokers, Antioch College, the schools, and we got some very good feedback from them. And one of the initial pieces of feedback was that they felt that was too aggressive. And out of that, we refined the goals. And that, uh, in November, council adopted a resolution based on those goals. And the top line of that is to actively support an increase in housing stock over the next 10 to 15 years of 300 to 500 units. And that's across income levels within that. Uh, what the needs assessment suggested as the emphasis needs to, a particular priority needs to be given to rental housing because there is so uh, little of it, and that was across income levels. Um, with the, the report that you have, what we've done is made some recommendations for what <coughs> we would like to do in 2019. And I'll just uh, you know, kind of briefly summarize those. One is to add additional members to the board and that would be including an alternate council member <laughs> and potentially a planning commission member and a realtor. And then another goal that we have for 2019 is to complete the written housing plan as a living document. And that would include strategies for increasing stock of new units, addressing rehab repairs of existing units, provide a structure for affordable, for the affordable housing fund, which is part of the discussion with the needs assessment and criteria for its use and to develop a marketing plan concept. Another goal would be to commission a study of Glass Farm uh, that um, so we can understand how, how we can best use that property that the village owns. And as part of this process, we would once we have a draft housing plan developed, what we'd like to do is another series of community conversations to get feedback <coughs> from the community and help us um, continue to refine that. And so that's um, both what we've done and kind of what we're proposing to do in 2019. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to make that sound. <laughs> um, so I am not sure if I saw this in the document, but I thought there was a goal to um, look for developers to reach out to try to get developers interested yes. in the available properties. Can you speak to that? We, some of those conversations have been happening informally, and that would be one of part of our strategy to figure out a way to really to determine a way to do that more systematically. Um, and there's really several things that are part of that. One is uh, the needs assessment identified available land. Some of it's privately owned. Um, and that will be, a, that's a little bit different than what you're asking, but if we're going to attract developers, they need to know <coughs> where they're going to go. And so mm -hmm. part of that will probably be also conversations with owners of land. Um, I don't think we had any developers at that stakeholder meeting. Um, oh, well, but well, Andrew we, Clark, yeah, we the Green Generation. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, Green Generation was there. And so what, what we are hearing from them and other developers is what are the barriers? Um, so, you know, theoretically, the market is tight for different reasons, and we want to hear from developers on what we can do to open that up for them. And, um, and so I, we don't have the answer yet on how that will be done and who will do it, but we know that needs to be done. That we want the, 
I, we think what's happening now is developers are going to do things in places where it's easier for them to do it. And we can't meet these goals if that remains the case. And mm -hmm. um, I'd also say that one of the part of this looking strategically for a housing plan involves gathering the kind of resources. Where's funding? Who are the developers? Who, who can we collaborate with? Where is buildable property in the, so, so I, that's sort of all encompassed by doing a living document plan. Um, I wanted to underscore uh, the importance of engaging planning commission um, moving forward. So I really appreciate that that is on this list uh, for next year um, for a variety of reasons. But I think that's part of how we're gonna add capacity and, and you know, gain some efficiencies and, and you know, just get everybody on board. Um, the other thing I want to make sure that has been mentioned a couple times um, is this uh, moving forward with formalizing our partnership with Home Inc. Um, because Home Inc. is adding capacity uh, in this affordable housing area. Um, you know, and, and so I know we've mentioned it, or I've mentioned it certainly several times, and, and I want to make sure that that is uh, a focus. Good. I guess I just want to follow up on that. I, I mean, we, I, I don't suppose we're saying that we would partner exclusively. Sure. With All right, just I mean, if, I'm not sure that there's another affordable housing player out there, but in, in yeah, the, that doesn't preclude right. other partnerships, right? Right, okay. Okay, Lisa, were you? Uh -uh. Okay. I'm good, thank you. Canada, good? good? All right, Marianne? So, yeah, so one thing I wanted uh, from council was to affirm what we said uh, would, would be our goals for 2019. And, you, and you've added the two caveats of uh, looking for ways to involve planning commission, one of which will be having a member on, the, on our team and um, develop a more uh, formal relationship with Home Inc. Yep. If, if, uh, if that's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, great. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, sounds great to me. Um, did you want to? I, I, I don't need a vote, I don't okay. think, but just I do, do yeah, people. Yeah, this is great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Dr. Um, McGruder. And then we have a special report um, from the Economic Sustainability Commission. Lisa? Yeah. Um, one of the 2018 goals of economic sustainability was to start thinking about an attraction and marketing strategy um, for the CBE, knowing that even just that naming of the CBE was part of what would need to be rebranded, but just for the purposes of the conversation, I often call it like the land formerly known as <laughs> the CBE, like Prince, but I'll just call it the CBE. So um, we began in September um, with some work on this goal, um, and I'm bringing this uh, special report to you really to get it planted in your in your mind so you can uh, kind of think about it as we approach planning. So um, I don't, I'm not looking for any real decision tonight, but just, um, just thinking about the role our commission might uh, play to continue to work on this goal, or maybe we should pause until the 2019 council priorities are established, knowing that that won't really be very long because the council is really getting a head start on planning, I think, this mm -hmm. year and starting really early. But just to quickly describe, we, we started with um, a general brainstorming session and then we uh, developed a SWOT analysis. So looking at internal strengths and weaknesses and external opportunities and threats, those have been presented to council in uh, past months in our um, minutes and so then we generated a set of ideas for potential target industries and businesses i'm not going to read them um, we have a set of questions <laughs> just to consider about um, these are kind of the bigger more difficult questions but we are recommending the following next steps 
Um, we want, we're recommending that we rebrand the CBE to focus more on an attraction strategy for the business we, businesses we want to attract. Um, we want to investigate real estate groups that would be a good match to support us. We think a simple site plan is needed. Um, we want to more deeply research incentives available from Greene County. We want to explore local collaborations and expansion opportunities, um, reach out to citizens more broadly, and uh, do some sort of marketing persona work of uh, more deeply look at potential industries that would be appropriate for the CBE, uh, look for some similar communities who've done this kind of industrial <coughs> business development. So these are some ideas. The ESC is ready to work with the council on these initiatives to facilitate this work. We're anticipating it would be a major goal for 2019, <coughs> along with a few others that we'll bring in our final report. But we just really wanted to plant this seed and food for thought. Great. And related to that, Lisa, are, is there some contemplation of sort of having some focus groups, like what's happened with, uh, aren't, aren't you and Karen involved in the local food? Um, I, I haven't been attending. Karen is. Oh, Kevin has. Okay. Um, Kevin has, yeah. Um, I knew somebody had. But we do want to reach out, as it said, reach out to citizens outside of the ESC for input. Okay. So I would just, I mean, maybe in drilling down on that, mm -hmm. I've, I've liked that idea of trying to pull together some of those folks that are in different industries that would fit with the CBE mm -hmm. to do deeper dives and brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You'll see a lot of our ideas around uh, potential target industries have to do with food, wellness, nutraceuticals mm -hmm. um, that would be compatible really with Cresco as far as um, that space. And uh, B Corp, B Corps, we're learning what more about that? those. So those are a form of corporations <coughs> that are uh, particularly focused on sustainability and social good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I understand. Cool. Is that mm -hmm. right, Kevin? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, we have a couple of people on. It just came up in our last meeting, but um, we have a couple of people doing more investigation on those. Is that, mm -hmm. is cool. that it, uh, so there's LLC, and then it's, I think you add another L. Is that the same thing you're talking about? It's all kind of under the umbrella of social enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and I intended a workshop about that so I'll have to find my notes about mm -hmm. what they went on about B Corps that I don't remember is in October. And there may be tax incentives yeah. related to B Corps. Right. It's a good sounded like goodness. So yeah. more on that. I love I love goodness. Yeah. All right. I have a question, just something that piqued my interest. Uh, one of the moving forward steps uh, or maybe it's prior to that. It's about the irregular parcels. At the, at the CBE, mm -hmm. I mean, what 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 is contributing to the irregular? I mean, no, it's you've just got a the really funny shape. And the, yeah, it's and because then, of the way the because of the way the the road had to go in to serve the the to serve the area in the best manner. And is Cresco like in up in the corner? Mm -hmm. But then there's, there's this wasted. funny little strip. Uh, yeah, we can bring it. Yeah. As we get closer to it, we'll bring a side plan. But it's got, it is an odd shape. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A bowling alley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I, I appreciate this report. I like all the ideas and the SWOT analysis. And I just encourage the commission to, to evaluate the ideas and choose a few to start working on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to just looking at everything, because it's a lot. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Point. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you, Lisa. We're moving into old business, and um, we are briefly going to go through an end-of-the-year review. And um, Lisa and I collaborated on this. I'm going to, Lisa's going to walk through uh, the slides, but I want to preface this by emphasizing that Lisa and I worked on this. There's so much going on across council. And what I want this to turn into is a end of the year report from council that adds in all the great things that Marianne you know about and Kevin you know about and Kanetta you will soon be knowing more about. Um, so just 
keep in mind that there are lots of things like related to the Environmental Commission and HRC that we aren't as involved in. So this is not meant to be like, you know, all inclusive, right? We want to add more. Um, but as I think you're going to see, it's awfully impressive. So Lisa, why don't you take it away? Sure. And, and uh, we chose to organize it around the values rather than going back to that goal document and looking at the more discrete activities. And it, it was a it was a great experience to just not look at that goals and task table and just try to remember everything that we've accomplished this year. And so as, as Brian said, I mean, even uh, what Kevin um, reported out from the Housing Advisory Board plan <laughs> expands this first slide where we talk about how the village demonstrated um, its com commitment to affordability and zoning changes that support infill um, with and we had the utility roundup program of a significant um, a doubling of return on investment and I know that Patty wrote in her uh, manager yeah, it like maybe if it's even a trip report maybe even more than uh, doubling the return on investment through a change in strategy um, we're launching the designated community improvement corporation our support of the Glen cottages new zoning as uh, the Housing Advisory Board plan talked about <coughs> that, approved the housing vision and goals, and then the Village <coughs> Solar Array uh, came live today. So, I mean, this year, today. Uh, so then um, the next slide, new opportunities for community and economic development were launched that will have long-term impact. Uh, one of the things that's important to think about is uh, some of the things we achieved this year will have impact right away. Others are longer term decisions that will take a little bit longer mm -hmm. um, to play out, but are still worth looking at both um, near term and long term wins. So Cresco is online. The lodging tax has contributed around $50,000. The village continues to support conservation. Um, the village policy limiting pesticides and herbicides. Um, the village incentive policy was launched this year by the Economic Sustainability Commission. Uh, we agreed to convene the DCIC, and then the county and state gave Yellow Springs more than forty thousand um, dollars. Critical. And, and by the way, that's a combination of that twenty-two thousand that we got from the county, and then we got twenty thousand from the state to support the connector project. Thanks. Um, and we, I think we may have missed some environmental commission things there. Yeah, ma I would say the letter that we sent to the mm. EPA. Oh, yeah. yeah. Regarding mm -hmm. the Verne. Verne, yeah. yep. So again, this is not uh, exhaustive. Um, critical infrastructure improvements were planned and implemented. The long-term capital improvement strategy was important. The funding of active transportation plan, the policies for complete streets and dig once, safe routes, curbs and ramps, sidewalks, action plans, stormwater and electric system studies. It's really been a busy year um, for infrastructure improvements and planning <coughs> that will have a lo long range impact. Um, progress was achieved in the village's <coughs> ongoing to commitment to a model justice system. This highlights some of the training that's been going on, 40 hour CIT, implicit bias, scenario-based training, um, de-escalation training, the Justice System Commission was established, a community outreach specialist was brought on board, we've increased the utilization of mayor's court, we've passed new taser and surveillance policies, and there's an increased focus on guidelines for village policing. So as, um, you know, Brian mentioned related to the, um, letter from 365 um, I, I tend to agree that that is um, um, writing a letter like that I see it as a favor to the village because the, immediately I thought we're not doing a really good job shining the light on the work that we're doing already mm -hmm. um, and as I worked on this I thought wow we're just not spreading the word maybe um, and telling as much of a story about what we have going on and uh, so I think that's an opportunity um, to give maybe 
um, the chief a little bit more support to document and communicate about the things that are going on. Uh, so I'm, I'm committed to that. Uh, the village continues to take action that demonstrates its status as a wel welcoming community, the diversity hiring policy, the recent strengthening of the welcoming village policy, um, the public space that was just confirmed for the Gaunt statue, um, the community gallery reopened, we're a bike friendly community, and the recent celebrations of the Vita Award at Muralists Women's Park and other local public art support. And uh, finally, um, valuing and facilitating citizen participation. We're able to live stream council meetings. There have been a number of community conversations and we're committed to having more. Uh, I think we've demonstrated a very solid commitment to public comments and even when our meetings go very, very long, we know that as a council, those public comments are imperative for us to hear. Um, we hope that there is a perception <coughs> that we are open and accessible village leadership. We want to hear from the community. And we've improved our use of social media and the website and communicating our goals more broadly. So it just all wraps up with a thank you, um, not only to the village community, but all of the commission members. Uh, accomplishing all this work has taken a lot of work by a lot of people beyond just the people up here on, on this podium. And we're really grateful. And we hope that people will continue to be involved, both with um, agreement and also bringing their critical thinking and ideas about how to solve problems. So this is a start. Yeah. This report. <laughs> and council's never done this before, so I thought this was a good, you know, thing for us to start doing. Yeah. And thanks to Brian for all the great photos. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I see you taking photographs all the time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yes. those are our photos too. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, 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 right. And right. thank you to I the other find a few on the photographs. The spirit of collaboration. Yes. <laughs> that, that, right, that's right. okay. A bunch of them in the next thing are mine. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he dropped them in the PowerPoint. Right. Um, the <laughs> village manager hiring. Um, but oh, you going to yeah. say something? Yeah, yeah. It occurs to me that there's some things that staff has done that aren't included here. There's a lot that's yeah. not in here. Well, I, actually, I am preparing my end right. of year report, and Johnny oh, and okay. his team Great. are preparing their own end of year report. Okay. So you'll actually have you will be inundated with, with what years. with so, what state so the staff has done. I mean, I, I think this is great. Maybe next year we'd have one report that would yeah. include. Yeah, and this is again where report. there's so mm. much stuff that you guys know, and mm. oh. you know, if we had more, well, no, you know, we were glad to get something started, yeah. and uh, we want to yeah, add to it. Good. Yeah, I, mm. I think this is great. You guys did a great job, and I look yeah. forward to the two of you doing a great job next year. <laughs> um, having said that, um, Judy, I wonder if it would be a good idea. Um, as we're going through our daily lives uh, on council throughout next year, uh, you know, a lot of good things are happening, but maybe we can capture them in the moment, like and create like a end of the year parking lot. Mm -hmm. We could just say, hey, can we drop that over there? And you just, you know, develop a policy. Because I'm sure you guys had to really work hard to try to remember and, and dig through and get all this stuff. But if we could just sort of collect it as we go. So we kind of, I think, have collected it as we go. I mean, that's, yeah. it'd be great to have help. But, um, you know, one of the things I think I'd ask as a next step is if anybody wants to look at this and wants something added to it, will you just send it to me mm -hmm. and I'll fold it into the document. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, these are kind of high, high level. But, I mean, for example, I got the Vernet EPA letter. But if it, from your notes or mm -hmm. uh, commissions that you've worked on, anything that comes to mind, um, and we can start adding to it, I'm glad to do that. Okay. Yeah, and, and I do like Kevin's idea, you know, if, it, if it's possible to kind of, you know, note things as we go through, you know, minutes and agendas um, to help, you know, not only compile by, at the end of the year, but I think, Lisa, your point about better, uh, promoting to the community or I guess 
uh, educating the community about what's going on. Um, so maybe a file where Judy has a Word document that just lists certain things <laughs> as we go that she can add to, but then if you all take pictures, you can shoot them and she can drop them into that folder on her mm -hmm. desktop yep. mm -hmm. and just yep. keep it in one place. That sounds great. And before we put this on the website, which we will, we will credit the YS News pictures. <laughs> um, and, and, and part of this was Pretty that, up. yes, uh, right, which, which we've talked about before. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this was kind of uh, gathered oh, quickly. That, I, I'm going to jump back into the housing report because mm. it's something <laughs> I forgot. Because speaking of the website, what I would like is both that report as well as all the documents that were listed in that report to be available, easily available on the website. Ideally, there'd be like a ta housing and then go down. But at any rate, I will work with Judy on that. Yeah. Well, you just approved uh, some money there for clerk base, so all of these things have now become potentially possible. Great. Yeah, and, and we had talked about, Judy, that, you know, <laughs> Melissa kind of knew how to create new pages, but I know that that's not easy on our current system and so but I think that's what Marianne has in mind is that there would be that housing page and links to the documents yep, yep. great um, okay I wanted to talk a little bit about village manager timeline um, and what I uh, had Judy print out and put on the table was a document that we had looked at that described the different tasks and um, with uh, a, a transition in council. I want to review some of these things briefly. And then what I will do on Wednesday um, is bring, I had promised to put together this because Marianne had mentioned fleshing out what the details are in that more, you know, outline form timeline. Um, and then the other piece, of course, is uh, we had on the table the village manager brochure that uh, Bing Design did, I think, an amazing job with. Um, and so if there are any final comments on that, um, it would be good to know because I'd like to put that out there hopefully tomorrow. I emailed your mind. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, <laughs> and I worded those. Um, we don't have it on the table, but okay. it came via email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there was a copy out. Uh, so Do you need a copy, Kevin? Uh, no, maybe Marianne. Ma Marianne. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, I can oh. pull it up. Okay. Um, so I just want to, just briefly going over this document about the council responsibilities. So um, the consultant RFQ, we did, we realized that we had a, uh, a better approach that would um, save money and also get what we wanted. So that is essentially checked off. Um, communications we are working on now, and Lisa and I are still um, uh, dedicated to that piece. So in collaboration with Patty and Judy and Ruth Ann and others, we've gotten recommendations about where to place our ad. Um, and the other thing that we're looking at, which I think is a brilliant idea, is to use LinkedIn. Um, the Village has a LinkedIn page. Uh, Bing Design has agreed to um, look at it and see if they can help us. Um, Lisa and I are going to try to populate it a little bit as well, but this could be an excellent way to target um, uh, to particular types of people for the job. Um, the other thing I will put out there is that, and we said this uh, the last time, we want any kind of community support in ideas around how to get the word out about this position. And um, I think that's all I need to say there. Uh, the next piece is the overall hiring process oversight, which um, initially had Judith and Marianne working together on. Kanetta, uh, I'm very interested in you jumping in on this piece. I think uh, when I was a new council member, uh, I was involved in the hiring process, <laughs> and it, and it you know, really helped me kind of shorten my learning curve. And what's important here is the citizen committee. And so um, I know, Judy, you were looking for the ad that we put out the last time, um, which I think will not be very different from this time. But I'd like to, um, I guess, by next week, get that out so that we are uh, putting out that call to uh, citizens to provide capacity for, well, two things. 
help us brainstorm the process. We've got a model already that can be referenced, but then also to help with when we actually get to the visits and some of those kinds of things, that committee was really important. Marianne. Oh, I was just thinking of when we put it, Judy, could you send, when you find whatever we did last time, would you send that to me? Yeah, you mean? The, the thing to go out to the citizens so I can figure out how the citizen, when and how citizens will figure into the timeline. And, and I was just thinking this is the holiday, so I'm not sure if we're going to start advertising now, we, maybe we should include that into the beginning of next year. Yeah. Too. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so then the next task was the candidate selection process. Again, I want to emphasize that we're not starting from scratch. Uh, I think everybody remembers we had tons of documents because the last process was very detailed. Patty, do you want to like say again, the best process ever, right? Exhausting, but but the best All it right. was. And so, so I think you know we can very definitely complete. refine that, but we've got a lot of documents along those lines. And um, you know, again, if if Kaneta, you are um, willing to be a part of that process with Kevin. I think it's a logical extension to apply where the committee can provide leverage. Um, and then finally, we've got the transition plan, which was already worked on. So we've actually done two of our five things. Yeah. Are we complete with that? Yeah, it's ready to go. I mean, um, I mean if, has if it someone come to council, has, has council appro approved it? it well, it came with all of the different meetings mm -hmm. and the list with it. And I said, if anyone has any, if there's someone I've missed that you feel I need to specifically put in that mix to let me know. And I hadn't heard anything back. I mean, we can certainly put it in again if needed. You know what? It might be good to, uh, when we have our longer retreat in January, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. to look at it then. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll have time. And then, uh, I guess from a budgetary perspective with respect to the overlap of the two salaries, we, did we go four or six? Where did we land on that? Uh, four. four. Yeah. <coughs> um, okay, so uh, I, I will update that timeline for Wednesday and bring that to our mini retreat, which is um, going to be in Wednesday. here at tape. Did I say Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll have tables. Uh, that is a public meeting as well. Um, we have an agenda. I noticed the heading says budget review, which Oops. I think was probably left over from a prior one. Oh, but it, it is not a budget review session. We have completed the budget. Yeah. Um, so this is primarily about talking uh, about our um, uh, commission, boards and commissions, and thinking about what we're going to be doing with that next year. Um, Patty's going to talk That's to right. us a little bit about um, some of her thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then the third item is about getting ready for goals. Is that right? Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. good. Um, so I think we have a new business item that Marianne, you wanted to talk about, the Little Miami Scenic River. And then I realized. And I hope there's some leniency. I forgot right. to put this on new business, but I'd like to talk briefly about our evaluation process. Okay, so Marianne, you're first. Yeah, there are two organizations, possibly both started by Hope Taft, or at least certainly she's very involved. One is the Little Miami River Cleaners, and the other is the Little Miami Watershed uh, something. I've heard. Yeah. At any rate, both organizations are there to protect and enhance and I'd say promote the Little Miami River and the watershed for the Little Miami River, which is the first scenic river in Ohio and I think really the first scenic river in the nation. So in those organizations have partners of that include municipalities and townships and organizations <laughs> that are concerned about the Little Miami River. For example, Tecumseh Land Trust is a partner, um, the Glen Helen, Bellbrook, and some townships. The Little Miami Scenic River runs through the South Glen and um, 
there's a uh, canoe launch at the Jacoby Road area, and I am going to come back to Council probably in January requesting that we consider becoming a partner with the other communities uh, and promoting the Little Miami River both for conservation purposes and as uh, recreation purposes, educational purposes, um, and as a trail of sorts too. So sure. just wanted to let people know yes. that. Awesome. And I, I'm going to be going to one of those meetings tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. You can join me if you want at mm -hmm. 10 o'clock. Um, so, uh, evaluation process. Uh, and, and Brian, I, yeah. I will share some of the responsibility for not adding this to new business as well. Okay. So it's not just your fault. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Sure. I appreciate it. Um, well, Kevin, why don't you talk a little bit about this, um, because I am very excited about how this is developing, um, and maybe you can talk about sort of where we're headed, and, and I think we're very close to sending out an evaluation for everybody to do via su Survey Monkey. Right, right. Yeah. So you all have received a few emails, and, and I appreciate Brian um, at least directing me to, to focus more on this document, which is a, a spreadsheet, uh, but it has all the elements in it that uh, that appeared um, in the survey monkey that you've gotten before in draft form. Although this this is updated, and and also the the survey monkey has been updated, but we didn't send it out again. So, um, in trying to refine and improve um, the evaluation processes, I think one of the first things that struck us was, I think, Judy's evaluation, where it was just like it was like a job description. It was like the way. You know, it was evaluating what she did on her very first year in the position, and it seemed that every year you just were going through the same things. Are you still doing, you know, 10 years later, as, you know, all those things that you did in year one, and are you doing them as well as you are? And I think at some point it becomes very difficult to really do a valuable um, evaluation and appraisal, uh, especially when you consider the folks that might people might want to be looking for opportunities for advancement or improvement. So, um, so what we tried to do is um, integrate more of our village values, not, not so much the council values, but our village values into some you know, workplace attitudes and behaviors. And so that's what you're, what you're looking at here. Um, and the way the, uh, you've probably seen the, again, you've seen the survey monkey. And it would just be a, a matter of um, identifying who you're, who you're evaluating uh, and then assessing on a point-by-point -point basis um, how those behaviors are being de demonstrated and you get to assess them. And we, I would just went with the three skill, uh, three levels, skilled, progressing, and needs improvement. And I thought about making it five, sort of like a Likert scale of five things, but I figured, why make it more complicated? And I couldn't think of two more things that would make sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there's room for comments, um, uh, or there's a place for comments where you can get more detailed into what your thoughts are when we're looking at uh, one individual. And then uh, the, and so I won't go through the details of each of these unless we want to talk about them individually, but we did want council to weigh in um, on each of these, and if we want to make changes, we can tweak it even tonight. And, we, and before we actually send it out, we can make changes. But I think the, the, the second part that's important, and then uh, Brian will speak to this, is the, the goals, mm -hmm. or the newly set goals. Um, so the first part is evaluating, you know, how well the individual being uh, evaluated addressed these current values and behaviors, and then what do we want to do to encourage improvement and, you know stretching you beyond just the, the, the regular things so that you you know so that it is more of a challenging effort from time to time to want to meet these goals and it's not just rote you know checking boxes right and I think you know it always when you said that our prior evaluation process was static I, that really resonated with me mm -hmm. and you know I think it's important that we encourage professional development so uh, first of all, I want to mention uh, we actually have an acronym here, 
Uh, I don't know if anyone knows the word corkle. <laughs> corkle. Anyone know? No. Yeah. Do you know, Patty? Mm -mm. We're in Scrabble heck now. Yes. <laughs> it means the heart of the seed. Oh, you mean it actually is a word. I'm looking this up. It's real. It's real. Um, so see, Megan, and, and, is that a word? I cannot. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and it, it's definitely real. So it's kind of like, you know, like, I mean, another did definition is like. Did you know this like, or did you look it up? I cheated. Are you making <laughs> I, I used the letters and there was a thing that makes a word for you. And so, but what was really cool <laughs> is it is what we are talking about. This, I think, um, I really like these principles. I agree with Kevin. We can tweak them. But I think these are the core values of our organization. And um, they are not, they're distinct ideas. Um, and uh, again, I, I think that they are solid for this first time around. Um, and we can always refine Comfort those. Chocolate, I think. Is that right? <laughs> no, tell, um, us, tell us what's in the corkle, yeah, yeah. in the corkle yeah. of that chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh, I, I think the, uh, yeah. I guess what I'm, yes, what, I want, have what I want to highlight <laughs> is, um, you know, one of the things we talked about is that council should take the lead for, in some ways, looking at uh, village-wide evaluations, evaluation system, and I think. The values should be village-wide. So I want, you know, Patty, you to look at this carefully. I want us ultimately to think about it. But I think this really represents, Kevin and I looked at the village values. We looked at a lot of different pieces to try to reflect what we're about. Um, and we've learned a new word. Um, so moving forward, what will happen, um, I am going to fill in the goals at the top piece based on the evaluations from last time and I will check with Patty and Judy to make sure that what I have in my notes represents mm -hmm. what you were thinking of and then this becomes a worksheet so the new goals are when two council members sit down in a review go over the feedback on what's already been established so next year we'll be on top of this we'll have the goals We'll, you know, perfect our values, and then we'll sit down and talk about what the new value should be. That's part of the review conversation. Um, and then the thing that I like about the survey monkey idea, which Kevin brought forward, is that it will compile the data and also allow for any other evaluators to be anonymous. So, you know, we will, you know, do what we've done in the past with Patty, all council members, and direct reports. For Judy, all council members, and people you work closely with, like Chris and Denise, and probably Ruth Ann and Patty, uh, I actually have a list of those. Um, so what I would propose is no later than Wednesday, we will have this updated. And if everyone can do their feedback by Friday, <laughs> then we can compile and then try to schedule those reviews still for the end of the year. All right, that's, I'm, I'm still on board with that. And if it is okay with council, since Kevin and I have worked on this, I am proposing that myself and Kevin be the two reviewers. Um, so that's how we will wrap this up. I think we will learn some things and we'll make this really solid next year. So questions, comments? It's very accelerated. Sounds good. By Wednesday, <laughs> our feedback. Day after no, tomorrow. Friday. Oh, no, by Friday. Comes out. Yeah, right. you're so you'll have, get it yeah, yeah, so you'll have three days Friday. to make your comments about so these things. We can things. block some time to work right. on it. Okay. And if you see anything that you think is, is really problematic, mm -hmm. let let us know. But I, I I don't I think everything here is what what we represent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm glad there's only three ratings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, really, because yeah. otherwise you end up in the middle and. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. Um, okay, so uh, Patty, manager report. Um, I, I, I'm going to let it pretty much speak for itself. I mean, the only thing I want to draw your attention to really is the are two things: the utility roundup, which Lisa had asked me um, to bring up, and the dollar amount you can see is in there, um, not including the five thousand dollars that we will be receiving from. The community foundation i did sign that paperwork today and virgil emailed me back that the 
check was in the mail, and I'm hoping that was not a sarcastic <laughs> comment. Um, but unfortunately, I was not able to get the number of donors today, Lisa. I will continue Thanks, to work on that. Um, and the other thing I want to bring to your attention is the computer upgrades uh, portion there. Um, this is something staff has been working on, and it, and it will save us money over time to lease our computers. Um, and we did a lot of background work with uh, tech advisors and what we needed. Um, we're going to, um, of course, most people will have desktops, but there will be four of us that will have laptops that can go with us, um, and that includes Judy and myself, that we can then plug into our desk uh, ports and just work on the screens, but they'll be mobile. Um, so this will, this will be helpful to us. It will save us money over time, um, and so, this is what we, as a staff, decided to move forward with. Great. So, thanks, Patty. Chris? I have nothing to add. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy yes. Christmas. Yes. Happy New Year. Uh, Judy? Um, <clears throat> pretty self explanatory. If you can just take a look at the 2019 calendar for boards and commissions, it should be accurate because it was not even done by me, it was done by the fabulous Eleanor. <laughs> Double and triple check this. So, but make sure you take a look at it and, and check it over. Also, I will make that correction to the agenda. Uh, otherwise, if everyone's good with it, that's what we're rolling with on Wednesday. Great. Yeah. And I, I, can we go back just for a second since Judy mentioned the extraordinary Ele Eleanor? I, I want to tell you that that Safe Routes to School travel plan was all cattywampus, and <laughs> and Eleanor, God love her fix that for me and she is just multi-talented and we are so lucky to have her so cool um okay uh future agenda items um so i know we added the uh resolution in support of the agraria trail now do you want that as a discussion or do you want it to actually be a resolution we'll bring in the resolution um as a resolution yeah okay uh any any other? Um, you need your ordinance to rezone. Yep. And then you've got your other two transfers and authorizing sales order and calendar year. Uh, that's all. I don't have anything <laughs> added to what's already there. Okay. And you know, it'd be nice to not pack it too full because I'd like to have time to discuss goals. Because um, I agree with what Lisa said that if we can not get those uh, confirmed earlier, that's always great. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I do have a request from mayor and clerk that they get about five minutes um, to do a little special report on uh, what cases are coming to mayor's court. Okay, okay. great. And the uh, annual reports from ESC and ACC will go to the second February meeting. Second February. And you can put my end of year report in the January 22nd meeting if you want. Um, it will be mostly in paper form, but. Okay. I have a question about the transient guest lodging. Do you know if that's going to come from Denise or and if it's. Going to the, oh. the 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 discussion that Kevin has asked for, mm -hmm. yeah, that brief will come from Chris and I. We'll work together on that. We'll work together on that. <laughs> okay, and I know that Planning Commission had had done a study and um, recommendations a year ago, which Council didn't pay any attention to at the time. I think, I think it would be useful to bring that back and have that in the pack. Just as the document as it was. As it was, okay. yeah. Um, not not reinvented. If well, I, I think I, mean, I gave a presentation uh, the first week in February. I think Judy attended it. I can functionally say that while some communities have, have tailored their approach to their community, functionally all of the things that we discussed leading up to the passage of the legislation I don't think that, that there's anything new or completely unique to add to that discussion. I mean, Judy, you sat through it. I mean, I, I think that we, we've touched on those points, but factually, if, there, if the environment here in the village has changed, then, you know, Patty and I will discuss that and 
see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. I will gladly entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll gladly make that motion. <laughs> All right. Second. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I know no one's opposed, so happy new year, and thank you.